we are alive. All right, welcome everybody. Sorry for the late start. Uh, we had a bit of problems with microphones and a few other bits and pieces, but we're here now. Um, you'll, uh, those of you who've uh, watched the show before, uh, we've got some fresh players uh, joining the campaign. I'll fill everybody in as we go on that one. But uh, in short, uh, welcome. So, uh, when we left last week's uh, episode, we were uh, looking at going on a bit of a treasure hunt with a Vrask by the name of Maximilian Maxigig, um, who had uh, apparently stumbled across some strange um, metal on a um, fused metal on a distant, unexplored world, um, and obviously wanted to uh, discover what it was about and uh, claim it before the UPF could get a chance to get in there. So uh, Max has gone through and convinced you to join him uh, in the CSS Last Legs, his, uh, the ship he's managed to, uh, to um, purchase for the expedition. Uh, and when you arrive at your um, at the spa at the starport to go up to the ship um, in the waiting room, um, eventually um, a whole bunch of people, some you recognise, your fellow adventurers from the Vol from Volturnus, and some you don't. Um, it appears that Max has managed to hire or convince more than just you. Uh, you, you heroes of Alternus. Um, there are uh, two male humans, a female human, um, a male Yazirian, um, a female Vrusk, and two Dralocytes, um, all standing uh, around uh, with various bits of equipment and duffel bags thrown over their shoulders. When Max walks in and goes, ah, excellent, everybody's here. Let me introduce you all to everybody. Um, and then uh, Max actually goes, does go and, and do that. Um, so uh, one of the Dralocytes is introduced as Babu Johnson, uh, a specialist in uh, all sorts of obscure matters. What would you say your specialty is, Babu? Oh, definitely oh space God, and uh, probably the uh, what's it? Uh, Sorry, I thought I had that turned off. Social psychologist of the group. Ah, yes, our yeah, group psychologist. And then and there's barbarian. And Ramsey's a barbarian. Yes, that's true. Then there's Cerise. Uh, Cerise is the. Uh, what would you call yourself, Cerise? The robotics expert? Would that be right? Uh, technician and grenade aficionado. <laughs> uh, then we have our combat specialist, uh, Jazz. Yep, Jazz is the gun monkey. The Assyrian gun monkey. The literally, gun monkey. Uh, Kat's our computer expert. Hi, Kat. Hello. Anything you want to add? No, no, computer expert is fine, physicist, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Bim Bam's our, uh, biolo our biologist. That's right. Biologist mm. plus. Biologist plus. Uh, and of course then there's Doc Perro, the uh, ship's medic. Yes, gre greetings all. I of a knife man. Look no farther. Uh, one question, Doc. When you administer drugs, do you go to the eyeball? Because <laughs> Jazz over here, that's he likes to do that. If, if that's the way you'd like it, we can do that, certainly. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they do like that. I thought it was the way it had to be done. Yeah, yeah. 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 folks and all that, you know? Hmm. And like finally, this there's. Jazz went to the same medical school. 
<laughs> that worries me. Uh, and finally, the as uh, the second uh, Dralosite, uh, Volk uh, is the uh, engineer. Uh, says uh, says Max. Yeah, that's enough about me. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing you do note um, is, um, pardon me, Daniel hasn't turned up yet. Um, which is interesting. Well, are we going to wait for him? What happened, Daniel? Let's try to get him on the phone. Um, you try and get uh, an answer, and there's no answer. It rings out. Goes through the voicemail. You haven't noticed any patients on the table. Who was the last no, one to Daniel. see Daniel? Uh, yeah, yeah, one of you guys were. Well, let's, I guess we'll just leave him a message. Um, and we're shipping out. And uh, once we're back into, like, regular Frontier Planet, we'll drop him another message so we can you know, catch up with him after the this mission's over. If that's what you want to do. Yeah. All right. Um, in that case, uh, Max uh, um, uh, hustles you towards a shuttle, um, saying a lot of your uh, saying a lot of your uh, a lot of your more extensive gear has already has already gone up to the uh, the last leg. <laughs> so uh, Jazz bought food and water anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, um, if there's nothing stopping you from leaving, which I believe there's nothing stopping you from leaving, you guys can uh, can board the shuttle and head on up. Did uh, yes. you d did you buy a sonic disruptor, Jazz? Uh, that yes. says as as we're leaving. Excellent. We're all good. Yep. Yep. You won't be carrying it though. It's too heavy. So it'll just be in the. Uh storage on the on the explorer but you can pull it out if needed oh it's too heavy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> jazz jazz is not a very strong guy you got to do in the amount <laughs> uh the centipede the centipede sorry the css last leg don't know where we got centipede from but the CSS last leg is um, a standard um, size three um, explorer. Um, it's just big enough to be uh, comfortable to be comfortable without being too big that it can't land on a planetary surface. Um, the cabins are small um, without being um, so. Um, certainly not the luxury liner of um, your last couple of Starship trips. Um, it also it, it, it also shows its age a bit too. It's obviously a second hand ship. Uh, it's obviously obviously seen some some use and some some uh, some wear over the years. But it seems in good nick. Um, nothing seems broken broken. Um, <coughs> Um, there is a, uh, in addition to yourselves, uh, there is a ship's engineer and a ship's pilot. Um, they tend to keep themselves, um, and in the few days um, it takes to get this, the ship up to 10% light speed, um, they don't say much, don't really mingle, um, but uh, it's obvious that they'll um they won't be joining you on the planet's surface their job is to simply you know keep the ship get land the ship on the planet that's it they're not leaving um that's not part of their their uh their mission profile shall we say while we're um, uh, doing that uh voke is going to take yeah. his own inspection of the ship 
Yeah, uh, some areas are uh, technically off, technically off, off, out of bounds. I mean, you know, um, you're chased out of the engine room, um, and you're chased off the bridge pretty quickly by the the engineer and the pilot, respectively. But the ship itself, as I said, it, it it's old, um, but it's certainly not decrepit. Um, there's no there's no flutter in the engine, for example. Um, engines, uh, you can tell. Um, has two engines, by the way, two atomic engines. Um, yeah, um, not much to tell really in that regard. It does take a couple of hundred hours um, to get up to 10% um, light speed at 1G. Um, maybe not, you know, 150 odd. Um, you clear, cust you clear customs. You clear. Um, the flight, flight zone around Prengla uh, without too much trouble and head off uh, into the wild blue yonder, shall we say. Um, yes, anyone got any questions at this stage? How many jumps are we going to do? Good question. Um, just pulling that information up as you speak, actually. Um, no, uh, after about an hour or so after lift off, lift off after de after leaving orbit, um, Max calls you in to the um, main uh, mess area uh, and floating on the, uh, floating above the desk is a uh, hollow map of the frontier. Uh, pretty much the same one uh, on the web page. If you guys want to pull up the pull up the uh, the 3D map at your leisure, uh, you can zoom in on that too. By the way, that uh, 3D map. I was just looking for Pringler. Dead center. Pretty much in the center. Green, right in dead center. You want me to tell them where we're going? Um, yeah, um, your your uh, trip is the first jump is from Prengla to uh, Granagru, uh, and then from Granagru it's over to Arax. This is going left, and then finally you're headed for FS9, or as Max calls it, star uh, sundown. Uh, do you want the coordinates for FS9, or can you f or can you spot it? Oh, I, I see found it. it right away. Yeah, I got yeah. it. So, three jumps. Um, you'll be able to get yourself out. That's, that's the general path you'll be taking. Um, you won't be stopping uh, in the two um, the systems for very long at all. Basically, just to uh, just to um, um, take on the new a, any news and uh, re replot the jump. You will be though in Arax. Uh, it'll t you'll have to change the fuel pellets in the engine. Well, you won't. The engineer will. Uh, that'll take a, a little bit longer to uh, uh, to take about half a day or so or so from memory. So um, yeah. Does that so from Peng. Oh, possibly, but not something you'll be that good at yet. We'll see. Like we a four arm or something like that. Yeah, but it's not a matter of arms, it's a matter of knowing what you're doing. Prangla to Garaguru yeah, Garaguru is around about three hundred and forty four hours flight time. Uh, and then Arx is another two hundred and fifty two and then it'll be a couple of hundred hours to to FS9, so you're in flight for about um, yeah, quite a quite a quite a fair way, uh, well over a week. Um, during that time, you get to know your fellow crewmen, apart from the engineer and the pilot. Um, you learn everybody's people may want to give some background information about themselves. 
Um, um, I put my background in the notes in the public note if anybody wants to read it. Um, some of that stuff you won't know till later, but you know, it's not anything secret. <laughs> there you go. Um, everybody seems rather pleasant. No one seems to be particular, particularly um, abrasive uh, in their attitudes or, or things. Uh, most people are excited. Um, uh, Brimbin seems to. Uh, uh, I'm having a blast. Yeah, ha ha having a blast, but constantly referring to an ex-wife of his. Um, um, bit like the way I. Bit like Go the way ahead. I. I was say, bit like the way I refer to my ex-wife. You know, he misses his he misses his ex-wife, but his aim's getting better. Uh, <laughs> Um, Perro, Doc, did you, do you prefer Doc Perro or Doc Gato? Oh, either works. Doc is fine, but Perro, Perro's my first name. Hmm. To keep so us Doc, sealed, you get the name <laughs> Doc. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Doc seems pretty, uh, pretty personable as well. Um, Cat tends to go on about uh, go on about computers a, a little bit. Um, obviously, the uh, the guy the, the 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 team members who have been together since Volturnus um, share a few in jokes and things like that, which they eventually explain to the other three. Um, but all in all, you don't can't really see much going wrong in terms of personalities. Um, although constantly going on about steam baths starts to get on people's User nerves disconnected eventually. from your channel. Who'd we lose? Nerves. Ha. Good joke. Who did we lost? lose? Doug. Doug. He'll be back. Anyway, so yeah. Um. We have an affinity for the shiny shiny. Have you seen any yeah. gold or silver around here, these parts? <laughs> Not on this ship. <laughs> uh, User joined your channel. He's back. And Doug's back. Sorry, I had a moment to yeah, disconnect. No, it happens occasionally. Um, Doc was just saying he likes the shiny shiny. He said, you don't have any gold on you, do you? <laughs> My gold? I'm, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm starting to get an impression of the um, the the crab monster from uh, Moana uh, about you, Doug. About you, Doc. I should say. <laughs> no, you haven't seen the movie. No, oh, can't say I have. Sorry. Uh, it's one of Disney's films, but it's not a bad one. Uh, when you see when you see the crab monster, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah. So, um, well, the best operating rooms are kept antibacterial due to precious metals. Keep that oh. in mind, folks. We're going to need as much as we can get. <laughs> I just want to see some stuff. Man, this is so cool. Starflight. I'm digging it. Dear idea. So I mean, I've done jump. it before, but it's still new. <laughs> yeah. So the first jump goes through without too much travel, too much trouble. Um, and so does the second, and so does the third. Um, so eventually you come out in the sundown system. Um, sundown is... Um, A K9 star for any of those, any of you who are particularly interested. Uh, orangey, red. Doctor Perro would be interested in K9 star. Mm, why is that? Perro means dog in Spanish. K9. Ah, okay, yeah, ha ha. Very wolf. Funny. Uh, wolf, yes, ha ha. Ah. <laughs> um. The planet uh, Sundown um, basically looks cold. Um, it looks cold. Um, it's around about 
um, the size of uh, Prager glass. Sorry, a standard uh, standard Earth size world. Um, gravity's according to the background report, which you all received. Gravity's near normal. Um, as you uh, fly closer to the uh, the system, you start to see some of the the rifts and cracks on the surface of uh, of the planet. Um, and obviously, the closer you get, the bigger the the the, the rifts seem to be. Until eventually, um, you. Uh, get that shot, which is one you've seen before, and uh, you s you're seeing it live. Um, yeah. Uh, heading down. Yeah. Um, you're heading down towards the uh, the planet's surface. Uh, takes a while to land properly um, but you do um, once the engines are effectively shut down you uh, crack the um, crack the seals on the on the hull uh, the air is uh, alien but breathable um, slightly cool um, th there's odd odd um, smells on the air but um, no breathable out atmosphere so um, I'm assuming you're going to be unpacking the Explorer is that right sure I don't have much to unpack it's all in my pack <laughs> Now, now, don't frighten him off on his first go. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, so, uh, the eight of you, seven and plus max, of course, um, as, you know, unpack the, um, the Explorer from the ship, um, make sure it's got a fuel, a full, a full, f a full fuel or energy load. Mm-hmm. So spread out before you is the deep rift valley, misty in the distance. On either side saw the towering stone walls of the rift, forbidding any ascent. Straight ahead, gentle rolling hills conver co conver co yeah, covered, yeah, converged, covered in tall waving grass merged with a mass of a green forest. Bim Bam takes a picture. I assume I'm probably driving and Jazz is on the turret. Uh, if you want to give me an operate machinery roll, yeah. You've never driven an Explorer before, have you? No. Unless Max wants to drive it. He's probably got a better operate than I do, but otherwise... Don't you use your tech skill? Yep, exactly. That'll work anyway, yeah. With a, with a two, that'll work anyway, yeah. Um, Could have driven it so roll. <laughs> well, Max, remind, Max reminds you uh, that you, you want to have friendly relations uh, with the Heliopes. Um, so don't go slaughtering them out of hand. So I'll load yes. a Tangler grenade in my grenade launcher. <laughs> That's friendly, a right? Sax on. Is that peaceful enough? Hang on, what was that? Uh, the, uh, is a Tangler grenade friendly enough? Yeah, maybe. What would you say, Babs? I, I said I haven't turned my Forsax on. Is that friendly enough? Mm, you and your Forsax. Do you guys need your Forsaxes? Forsax? Oh, hey, we should have a party. 
Are you like guys with Mace like... Axes sad now that you can't do double damage against the natives? Now, <laughs> <laughs> now. Now, now. Now, yeah, Max yeah. did not have any contact with the natives, correct? Or did he? Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> he was like, yeah, he communicated with them and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he, and he's actually uh, the polyvox. Uh, he actually, he's actually programmed all your polyvoxes. Um, oh, cool. With the language too, so you should be fine. Cool. Um, in that regard. So, uh, so yes. Um, so, uh, I'm, yeah, the you're a couple. Of, the the rift's a couple of kilometres deep, uh, about twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. Um, so, yeah. Uh, wow. The, yeah, it's wow. Um, not that not that our characters would know that reference, but. <laughs> No, but I'll give you that reference anyway because it'll help you, you know, help you guys with your. These are the rifts stuff. in kind of the middle of the map there. No, no, no. You are in. A, this is an entire rift. That's this part of the hills that come down low. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, so the, the upper surface is really map. cold. Okay. So. So yes. So yes. Um. Heading towards the Heliate Village, I'm assuming. Yes. Yep. Following oh, Max's mission. direction. Mm -hmm. Does he have any advice for first contact or second contact? Yeah, don't kill them. He's eyeing. He's eyeing some of you with who are who are thinking. Yeah, those of you who are fingering your weapons and and things like that. Yeah, don't hey, kill them. I pointed out that I loaded a Tangler grenade. Uh, We're professionals. We've done this before. Yes, yeah, it worries me. Um. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Well, again, just to just to remind everybody, um, there are apparently uh, most of the heliopes are apparently nomadic, uh, who uh, who roam the um, the rift floors, um, but one group tribe whatever is a little bit more um, civilized and they've settled down into a village which is where you're headed now uh, Max spent time in the village and he also discovered the uh, fused metal uh, in and around the yeah in the village so um, that's where he wants to head uh, to try and discover uh, discover them again hey Max did you ever meet any of the nomads no, not really, he says. Just okay. the uh, just the village heliopes. Just the village heliopes, he says. So you're you uh after uh a while you uh, you enter the um the forest uh, and I'll need a, a another uh, drive roll, please, in difficult terrain uh, that the forest is. There's no track, roadway to follow, so you've got to pick your way through the forest. There's a few scrapes and bumps, and uh, you've, you've got to actually back up and take another route once. Almost get bogged. This wasn't a good paint job, Max, was it? <laughs> not now, no, not, certainly not now. Yeah, from not driving meters, fast. Yeah, obviously. Uh, from 20 metres away, all you can see is the forest. Uh, all you can see of the forest, I should say, is a dismal, dismaying tangle. Uh, trees on the fringe show mighty trunks having an umbrella-like spread of flimsy branches reaching to the ground and covering with feathered leaves. The distance between one trunk and another is ample for passage, although it's almost impossible to see a trunk until, uh, until you are very near it. Uh, this single species of tree dominates the forest. Uh, Bim Bam's going to grab a leaf and put it in a sample vial for later. Excellent. 
Um, there are many other varieties of the same species in intermingled, but that's all seems to be part of the same species. Uh, ground vegetation is sparse, and the soil the soil seems firm and occasionally rocky. As you enter the thick grouping of trees, masses of low-hanging branches surround you. Travel is slow. Vision is limited. Suddenly, you hear a loud screech and whizzing sounds as small stones fly past and uh, the uh, the explorer and strike it with the cell with the sound of a ringing bell, or several ringing bells, to be accurate. Thinks the natives are friendly. The stones seem to be coming from beneath the trees, and you glimpse what appears to be a pincer-like hands. I'll stop. Hmm. Max, these your friends? Well, they shouldn't be attacking us, no. Out of the trees come maybe half a dozen or eight, six to eight, uh, heliopes. Uh, throwing stones at you, uh, at the explorer, uh, and uh, definitely being, uh, definitely acting in a hostile intent. Does the explorer have a PA? No. I guess you're going to have to head up there, Cerise. Me, I'm driving. Yeah, that's my job. Eh, I can drive for you. <laughs> Probably the Ned's best driver. Possibly. Uh, look up the skill description. You need a little more. I think. I can try to communicate with him. I mean, you're that's... negative 83. I'm negative 64. Somebody should try. You're gonna, you you opening that you, you well you're still inching forward in the explore, in the explorer. Um, I thought I stopped. Oh, did you want to stop? Sorry, my I mistake. Yeah, yeah. I misunderstood. So is it so just a get... simple door that opens in or out? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a hatch that opens out. If it opens up, kind of like a car door, does it give me protection if I just step out behind it? Oh yeah. Uh, I'll do so that. So I just hold my hands up and yell out, "We're friends." Okay. Mm, Doc approves of this. He'll join you. Do the, um, uh, do the old captain. Kirk. We come in peace. Shoot to kill. Shoot to kill. Shoot <laughs> to kill. <laughs> we come in search of riches. I mean, in peace. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> No kill. Actually, we don't want that. Yeah. Um. They don't seem to be letting up. In fact, they seem to re they seem to reintensify uh, their slinging of stones. Uh, and uh, they're actually <laughs> coming out of the they're actually actually coming out of the trees towards you. Um. With uh, uh they seem aggressive. Somebody have a good search to look behind us just to make sure they're not throwing it behind us or something coming up. Does Matt's know if these are the same villagers? These are nomads, says Max. Sorry. These appear to be nomads, he says. Can't we just uh, so drive on and just leave them behind? They're on foot. But they'll kill us with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> They're on foot. They're on foot, but you're only going at about, at about walking pace anyway because of the density of the forest. Can they damage the explorer? Or are oh, well, just going to bounce off? Well, they might crack the windscreen. Um, their little bullets do a D10 every hit, so... The explorer's got a few bit of stamina, but it, it's not going to take it forever. Mm-hmm. It's your call, Max. It's your expedition. Tell us what to do. 
Uh, oh, I, try I, not I, to. I'm, my finger's itchy on the uh, trigger of the axe. Yeah, I get it. Hey, Jazz, why don't you fire a couple of warning shots from the heavy lasers? And I'll start driving again. I'll get back from inside. Jazz. Oh, if and, people uh, are outside, I'll. Maybe a stun grenade? Yes, good idea. Let's get back inside. Mm hmm. All right. I think it in. Jazz can like take a shot at uh, at a tree. With you know, your laser. In, in their in their direction with the heavy laser. Okay. And what's the heavy laser set on? Um. Well, the heavy laser draws power directly from the explorer generator, right? Or the explorer. The explorer's battery. power. The explorer's power battery. Yeah. Let's see. What's the what's the range? I guess we'll just on leave it on ten, on the heavy. Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean the the SEU range. On the heavy uh, it's, uh, five to twenty-five. I'll probably just leave it on ten. I mean, okay. Leave it on ten. That's okay. Pretty deadly. All right. Yeah, ten. That's ten dice. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you you're shooting into the trees, are you? Yeah, I'll just shoot the trees. Um, like not too close to them, but not so far from them, so they get the get the idea. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want a dice roll for that? No. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, but just in case something goes wrong. <laughs> I get down, I get down. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was dangerously close to another ore incident. <laughs> yeah. <Yay! laughs> it, it, it was dangerously close to another ore incident. <laughs> Do the no, I, do you guys know how the um, you know, the the dice and critical fails and uh, how the numbers work out? Yeah, I do at least. Yeah, they should do. Okay. If you're all and uh, uh, zero is um, one to five is um, a critical hit or you know something really good happens. Um, Ninety six to a hundred is um, oh my god we have stuffed up badly. Oh my God! Jazz has shot the explorer and blown the uh, blown the explorer's engine. Yeah, and Jazz tends to run uh, tends to roll ninety six to a hundred quite a bit, particularly I during surgery. Really do. During mm. surgery. Yeah, during surgery. Yes, <laughs> Jazz was our medic. Good old Doctor Shaky. <laughs> Operative Gordon Beam Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing we have a um, real doctor. Yeah, finally, finally, yes. Um, so, um, uh, a coherent beam of light uh, flashes out of the uh, heavy laser uh, into the trees. Um, the um, startling the uh, startling the heliotes. Uh, some of them are actually withdraw into the um, into the um, Back into the forest. Ah, oh, what a shame. Uh, one of them um, uh, actually manages to uh, ping you, Jazz, in the head with a rock for five points. Oh. What do you want to do? No, um, how many are still attacking us? If any. Oh, three or four. Although, they're, although there's still a lot of rocks coming. Oh. I'm up for it if you're up for it. <laughs> up for what? Well, I'm up for it. I think that's three votes. Yeah. We really don't want to fight them, guys. Fight them. We're not here to kill natives. Is violence really necessary? That doesn't sound like fun. All right, I'll sit low in the seat, and my head will slowly start sucking in. <laughs> Hello, Babu's going to a sulk. Um, so uh, you're moving. You're still driving forward. I take it, Cerise. Yes. Yes. Okay. Looking um, for traps, pits. Yeah, pits. Yes. Okay. Um. Can I get a search roll, please, real quick, for you from you then, please? Oops, first one. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, you don't spot any traps or pits or anything like that. Um, what you do spot, though, there's uh, four more. <laughs> four more um, heliopes uh, uh, running forward. Um, these ones have painted tails. Uh, their pierces are upraised. Um, yeah. And they seem to be yelling at the others. Uh, I'll point, sorry, point these ones, Bradley. Yeah, they're, they're village heliopes. Don't hit them. Uh, looking closely, you can see one seems to be carrying an automatic weapon. Yo. Max, did you leave them with weapons? <laughs> uh, 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 trade goods, he says rather sheepishly. <laughs> wow. Leave them any fire water too? No, of course not. At mumbles, mumbles something cynically about, well, finally, I find out that we get stranded on where I can resupply ammunition. <laughs> uh, the locals have ammunition. <laughs> Our employer, partner, supplied them with it. <laughs> Trade goods. <laughs> anyway, um, the, uh, the, the painted tail heliopes um, uh, fall upon the uh, non-painted tail heliopes uh, and battle ensures um, a few rounds from the automatic weapon uh, automatic pistol automatic pistol by the way um, uh, are squeezed off um, one of the uh, one of the nomad heliopes is uh, is hit uh, and with that, the nomads break off uh, and flee into the into the forest. What are you guys doing? I'll stop. Let's GTFO while the going's good. Well, someone's getting, well, someone, someone wants well, to GTFO. Well, we got allies on. here. We need to say hello to, right? Folk is yep. uh, his body's waving in excitement. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, Jazz. Yeah. That automatic pistol, it's obviously of alien design. Oh. Jazz will point it out. Like, guys, those. That, that pistol's not from the frontier. Max, did you. Where'd you. Did you trade that to them? No, of course not. As I said, we had trade goods, no, no weapons. We're not irresponsible. I'm not irresponsible. Oh, I thought you were calling the weapons trade goods. Oh, yeah, no, me too. sorry, no. No, that was... Uh, no. <laughs> well, How long has it been since Matt's came here? Um, well, uh, um, six months, maybe? Six months Did where someone else then? could have landed on the planet. I it's possible. More to the point, Jazz, have we seen anything like this on Volturnus? Does it look like something we saw on Volturnus? No, it does not. Is it you'll half have to bar? Get a, you'll have to get a very you have to get a, 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 an up close personal look if you want any more detail than that. And okay, I don't mean yeah. getting shot by it. I've been having I've been examining it. My going That's theory is that. There were visitors that just came before us that pissed off the nomads and supplied the villagers with automatic weapons. In other words, someone stirred up trouble. So, Jazz, why don't you stay on the heavy laser mount and a couple of you guys get out and go talk to him. And take Max with you, since he should be known to them. Mm-hmm. Max! Sure. Says one of them, the one with the automatic pistol. It's good to see you again. This is by a polyvox, of course. Uh, and the heliate with the uh, automatic pistol um, um, 
moves forward and embraces uh, embraces Max uh, in a uh, a rather large bear hug. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> this is the part of the game where we get to listen to Matt talk to himself. <laughs> no, Matt doesn't do that. Well, Matt does do that, but not for him. Uh, so a conversation in, a conversation ensures between Max and uh, uh, Heliope, and then Max uh, uh, Max beckons you over and introduces you to Lee Car. Uh, that's Lee Car, not Lee Car. Lee Car. Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the village Heliopes. Uh, these are my these are my friends, Lee Carr. Friends of Max, friends of mine, yeah, that type of thing. Um, picture picture slightly native, picture slightly cinematic, Hollywood style Native American speech. You know what I mean? <laughs> Via the poly box. Via the poly box. They were like a metallic tin then. Uh, no. So, um, yeah. Um, come, 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 village. And uh, and they they seem to lead off towards where the village would be. Uh, and that, by the way, are we going to drive or just follow them? I assume we'll drive. We'll drive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, just 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 something I need to fill somebody in on. Um, the four frontier races generally use uh, they've been around each other long enough that the 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 styles of weapons and clothing and things like architecture and that blend a bit um, it's obvious th there's no such thing as a Rusk pistol or a Dralocyte pistol um, there's a a, a, a pistol made by Vrusk and a pistol made by Dralocytes because they, 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 they're slightly different stylings but they're basically the same the same the same thing the only other um, the other only other aliens you guys are aware of uh, are the Sapphire because um, you've met some in combat um, there's the reports of the Zoku who are supposedly Sapphire allies um, and then there's that's about it. Um, so somebody else landing on the planet and distributing guns to stir things up. If they're not frontier weapons and they're not sapphire weapons, um, then you don't know what they are. Um, we'll we'll ask uh, Leaker um, if we can take a look at his weapon. Can I examine it so you can distinguish? You know, maybe. If it identify the alien origin, maybe if it's Sapphire at least. Yeah, sure. Uh, give me a logic roll, please, Jazz. You're the you're the military expert. Oh no! Just by one. <laughs> um, <got> look. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, you got a penalty because it's alien, so it's a twenty percent penalty. Remember. All right. Yeah, it's even worse. Um, it's alien. Um, you're pretty sure it's not sapphire because you don't think a sapphire's tentacles would um, w would be able to operate this type of pistol. In fact, you're not even sure that y y you you you're looking at the way that the the grip and the trigger assembly and all the rest of it is. The heliopes seem to have a bit of difficulty using it as well. It's not designed for their hands either, and it's definitely not frontier. It's definitely not something you you recognise as, a, but it's your military background does tell you it is definitely a slug thrower, an, a, a, an automatic pistol. Um, it may even take, uh, with a little bit of machining, um, standard frontier rounds. We'll ask them. Uh, so where'd you pick that up? It wasn't from Max, was it? No, sacred weapon. Many generations passed down through my family. Oh. So you've had that even before you met Max. Si. I don't know why he went Mexican, but si. <laughs> and why are we having problems with the other? 
Ah. He, uh, he, 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 he says a word which is translated as nomads, but it, it, it's more on the lines of stupid, stupid idiots. Um, <laughs> um, always fighting. Uh, they think you try. They, they think you take their their land. They think you take their their hunting. They stupid. Ah, okay. Stupid but harmless. Not harmless. Kill you. And, we, and, 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 we, and with that, with, with that, he um, he he uses pinchers and s snips off a branch of a tree that's about an inch, inch and a half in diameter. With his, you know, straight through like a pair of second pairs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Point yeah. taken. <laughs> yeah. You and, for and surgery, Doc thinks. <laughs> yeah. Well, amputations maybe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, after a while. You uh, you arrive at uh, the Heliope village. Whoop. Um, now um, the uh, there's a series of buildings. Um, about a kilometre out from shore, in the river, uh, but most of the uh, village is actually on shore. And I'm just trying to get a scale for you. I don't have one, which is unusual. I thought I did. A scale for the squares? Yeah. Uh, in the bottom left, it says uh, one square equals ten metres. Oh, does it? I can't see that. It's covered up by. Oh, it's yeah. It's covered up by your 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 um um tokens portraits tokens that's why i can't see it there you go one square ten meters um so give you a rough idea um so um you come in from that direction more or less um, um uh, some people come out, come out to the village come out and say hello uh, to max and gets get introduced by him to you guys and vice versa. Uh, other than that, um, so yeah. Could uh, you guys fill me in a little bit more? What are we here to do? We are hired by Max to do something. To hunt for artifact. So uh -huh. yeah, when Max was here before, he found metal that uh, was fused with nuclear fission or fusion. Hmm. I, I don't remember, fission. but. Um, obviously higher tech than what uh, the Heliopes could could produce right. today. So we are looking for alien artifacts or something that we can monopolize and make money off of. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Money's always yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, and that... Uh, uh, grandfather ancestor's weapon is a good clue. It is. Now if we can only convince him that any other people who show up are bad and should be killed. Ah, typical bloody players. <laughs> Just kidding. That's <laughs> right. I said was I. Well, it's not murder, hopeless, <laughs> because these guys are still alive. Oh, yeah. So, um, what do you, you guys obviously dismount from? Uh, I'm assuming you dismount from the explorer. What do you want to do, guys? Um, it's typical. It's, it, it appears to be a typical um, primitive village. There are heliopes on the. Um, uh, it appear to be fishing on small boats in the in the lake. Um, there are people tending the gardens, um, and. Uh, there's uh, area three seems to be some sort of corral with creatures in it. Uh, people are tending those. Um, yeah, the, the uh, does it look like a steam bath house. Uh, no, I mean there's plenty of huts in that around. There's plenty of gardens in that around too. You can see there. I mean area two are gardens. Area three are pens. Um, 
ones are huts. Um, um, the large circular hut at five um, appears to be some sort of, well, you're not sure what it is, but there are a couple of heliopes outside um, seem to be standing, for want of a better term, standing guard. Um, uh, six are wells. Um, four are huts. Um, yeah, basically um, just tell Leaker we've come to, to learn more about him and his tribe and the ancestors and and uh, mm -hmm. we're quite fascinated by his people. Mm -hmm. Yes, do you well, have any more of those holy relics that we can look at? Ah, uh, no. Only, uh, only for only for these priests, not for outsiders. Um, he basically leads you across the village to Hut Eleven. Um, here, you can you can use this while you're in village. He says. Um, um, it's a it's an empty hut, basically. Um, there's a, a fire pit. Um, not long after you, you're you're shown to the hut, um, some uh, female heliopes um, show up and start building a fire and. Um, So, uh, and start preparing food, possibly for you lot. <laughs> Yay. What are they cooking? Mm, looks like native, uh, native um, uh, tubers, tubers and fish of some sort. Did Max bring any trade goods? Any gifts for Leaker? Mm-mm. Nope, Maybe not. we could help them with something in the village. Because okay. if I'm not mistaken, there seems to be a little bit of a uh, of a gap in the bridge. No, that's only a um. There's that's only a distance in between. Gap. Yeah, it's a distance gap. It's not an actual gap in the bridge. Oh, okay. That's a pretty long bridge then, one kilometer. <laughs> mm, that's what I say, it goes, it goes out a long, long way. Oh, okay, so that essentially says it's a kilometer out, gotcha. Yeah. Lika, could we possibly, could you arrange us for us to meet with your priest and he can tell us more about your legends and history? I can ask, he says. That would I be don't wonderful, know. thank you. Mm. Um, in the meantime, more or less, you guys have got full free range of the village, more or less, within reason, um, to explore around and see what you can come up with. Folk will go around the village looking for anything in need of repairs or possible improvement. Nothing too oh, fancy, well, you know, but... It's a primitive village. The whole place can do with the improvement, you know. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, not like a brand new... Uh, oh, like escalate well Escalators, etc., etc. Et <laughs> no steel beam. No. No steel at all. Kind of just, you know, primitive things that could be of use to them. I'm curious what the animals in the various number three pens are. Um, so if you wander over to one of the pens, it's a square corral made of wooden poles and posts. Within the corral are large, slow-moving creatures that resemble rabbits. Piles of green plants are scattered about the corral, and the creatures are eating them. There are a couple of female heliopes nearby, I'm curious what they're using for a ma manner of exchange. Is there any sort of wealth? 
does not appear to be. It all appears to be basically barter, if anything. But it seems to also be it so seems to also be a communal, a communal system. Um, you suspect that these rabbit-like creatures um, are uh, food animals of some sort. Jazz will, as they kind of uh, wander around, just looks around and just gauges their military capability, like how how deadly they can be, how well organized they might be, how well defended they are, etc. Yeah, there's no, there's no, as you can see, there's no palisade fence. Um, um, there's no, there's no weapons in, in, in view. Um, so, um, yeah, um, no spears, Cherise nothing like like that. Uh, no spears. In that, sorry, I rephrase that. No spears on in in, in people's hands and that. Um, a couple. You can see a couple of the fisher, the fishermen are uh, are fishing with uh, nets uh, off their boats. Uh, and in fact, looking carefully at the boats, um, canoes really, not boats. Canoes. Um, uh, there's some sort. Each canoe's got some sort of uh, barrel on the ba on the bow, um, which is something you've never seen, never seen before. But that's you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Cerise will talk to a couple of the women that are tending the rabbit things and ask about them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're uh, apparently the the the, the, the heliopes call them dopies. Uh, D O P E E S dopies, um, and they're relatively they have they haven't had them long, um, you know maybe you know, ten fifteen turnings years whatever, um, but um, or seasons a better way of saying it, um, and they they're basically yeah they they're learning how to how to raise them. Um, Domesticated for for food for meat. <laughs> Pardon me. How did how did they learn to domesticate them to capture them and use them? Uh, no, they're only rabbits. They can't be that hard to catch. Yeah, yeah but it only rabbits. started ten or fifteen years ago. Um, they're about the size. They're about the size of large dogs. These things. Um. Uh, Somebody, somebody, somebody's name you don't you don't recognise, came up with the idea of um, instead of hunting them, um, capturing them and 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 growing them nearby, uh, and then yeah. Is he a priest? No, no, just a hunter. Oh, very smart hunter. Apparently, yes. Or a lazy one. <laughs> or yeah, he went well, himself out of business. What's the difference, guys? Seriously, between a lazy hunter and a smart hunter? Um, I often tell my wife that I'm not, I'm not lazy. I'm just deficient. Hmm. I tell I people. I tell people. I say that to people in the IT yeah, who, who yeah. Man, who, I'm in the IT game, so managers who have a go at me, it's like oh, yeah, I'm efficient. I'm I'm naturally lazy. I'll get the computer to do all the work, and all I can do is sit back <laughs> and check the logs. I'm, I'm exactly the machines. same way. I once went into a job that was so messed up, I spent a year fixing everything up, and then I basically had to do nothing because it was all automated, and they got That's mad exactly at me. I'm like, yeah. look, is it my fault that I do the job way better than the last guy who had it? <laughs> exactly. Anyway, um, yeah, so look, um, the village maybe has been here for one or two generations. Um, yeah, the crop growing, it's... I mean, it, it's okay, but it's pretty primitive crop growing. Um, as I said, most of th this is the only group of heliopes who aren't nomadic. So the whole culture um, is on the cusp between, um, you know, that that nomad versus early early civilization um, cusp. 
It really is on that cusp. So ask more questions about how long the village is here, who settled it, why they settled it. Good fishing, um, good, 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 good gathering, good hunting. Um, um, why bother? Why bother moving around when when we don't have to? Because the fishing's so good, you know. It's the no, first sign of civilization. Mm -hmm. Just curious why the other Heliopes ha have not taken to settling, and you guys have. Because they're stupid. <laughs> well, yes, they are stupid. <laughs> now there's a real, there's a real, um, a real. Um, Prejudice, uh, obvious. It's, it's, it's an obvious prejudice against the the, the nomadic, um, you know, a real us versus them. Uh, if you're not if you're not us, then you're them, and them are them are stupid and evil and yeah, you know, that type of idea. Um, <laughs> it'd be it'd be a f it'd be a fascinating uh, it'd be a fascinating um, research project for a for an anthropologist actually. Um, in fact, the yeah, um, it, the, uh, the the you know, an entire career could be made just by by studying the the heliope, the nomad, and the village heliopes, and it probably will be when the UPF finally get here. Um, what about this uh, twenty seven twenty eight building? Anybody want to tell us about that? Yeah, that's a um. I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you about that. Um, that's a pyramid. It's a heavy wooden platform. Uh, sorry, I'll start again. Well, pyramid. Uh, it's a massive wooden stepped pyramid. It's about 10 metres high at its highest point. Uh, the, cur the carved wooden steps from uh, the building below, uh, that would be 25. Uh, the steps, 26. Um, and... Um, uh, yeah, so the carved wooden steps lead from 25 to the to the pyramid's top. Uh, and at the top of the pyramid, there are two platforms. Um, the larger of the two platforms is to the, the the south, and slightly, and about three meters below the uh, the smaller of the two platforms, with a short set of stairs leading up to the upper platform. Um, the entire Pyramid is intricately carved. Large, beautiful carved seams, colourful cloth, strings of crystal and shell beads are strewn over its entire surface. Um, the, while we're talking about it, 25, um, it's a massive wooden building. It's got an angled thatched roof. The walls uh, and entryway are also heavily decorated with colourful carvings. Um, the entry opening on the south is 4 metres wide and the building is about 10 metres wide, 30 metres long and about 3 metres high. It's got no windows. The north end appears to be some sort of stairway which you know, leads up to um, a stairway of heavily carved wood that continues through an opening up in the roof uh, up towards uh, the pyramid to the north. Um, yeah, that's what I can tell you about that so far. But it is certainly the centerpiece of the village, uh, and uh, is juxtapositioned quite nicely um, opposite the uh, hut and platform complex out in the in the lake. Or do we see anybody going in 25, climbing the stairs, anything like that? Nope. And the, the uh, villagers, do they say anything more about them when we ask about it? Or when I ask about it, at least? Well, it's a holy Tell place. Um, only, uh, um, only those deemed worthy by the priests uh, are allowed to ascend the stairs to heaven. Um, the stairs to heaven is probably the stairway. Um, the stairway to heaven, so to speak. Yeah, 
type thing. Um, apparently, um, the uh, the Heliates brings bring um, offerings to the main temple building, which they identify as the air, our building 25. Uh, and if they're suitably suitably um, impressive, the uh, the priests allow uh, uh, allow the individuals to ascend the stairs to heaven. Um, which apparently is of great religious significance. Um, so yeah. Do the people that go up come back down? Oh yeah, yeah. Apparently, yes. It's a uh, they commune with the gods up there. Apparently, <laughs> which is why only the which is why only the priests and uh, the the approved um, uh, heliopes are allowed up there. What about the the magnificent structure out in the river? Oh, that's the priest complex. That's where the priests live and live and do most of their work. Uh, it's also where some of the holy relics are stored. Now, was Leaker he a priest? Leaker is a priest. Leaker is a priest, actually. Yes. Oh. Well, we should ask him to tell us about their lore then can you start at the beginning do you know where your people came from the stars the gods brought us down from the stars hmm. how many generations ago in, in mists of time no sorry Leek, no sorry my mistake Leek is not a priest he's just a um, a sub chief. A sub chief. So he's like a. A lieutenant. Okay. Well, when he doesn't have anything else to do, <coughs> Thin Man's going to wander around the village and use his biology cast to analyze various things. Mm hmm. Um, most of the food uh, is edible um, in one form or another, uh, the tubers and that. Um, you do note uh, in your wanderings um, that um, there's some sort of... Remember I mentioned the, uh, the barrels in the front of the canoes? Yep. Apparently, yes. uh, apparently uh, y y you, you see one of the... Um, uh, you, s you see two of the Heliopes getting into the boat to go do, s to getting into one of the canoes to go do some fishing, um, and they uh, one of them turns a small spigot um, on the barrel, uh, which then drips some sort of purplish liquid through a hole in the bow of the of the boat into the into the lake, and then they push off and and paddle out to the, a fair way offshore, and then start casting their nets into the water. I wonder what the purplish liquid does. I'll ask him about it. What's in the barrel? What's in oh, the barrel? Uh, yes. Uh, um, grasp juice, they call it. Oh, well, that's how it's... That's how it's translated by the by the the poly boxes anyway. Does that attract <laughs> the fish or keep them away? Apparently, it keeps grasps away. Whatever grasps are. So no swimming without purple juice. <laughs> uh -huh. grass propellant. Uh, each of the uh, canoes is about three or four meters long. Seems to be hewn from the trunks of trees. They're pretty crude. Uh, none are over a meter wide. Uh, the aft portions are wider than the bow portions. Uh, and as I said, from the bow jut, small platforms equipped with several leather straps. 
uh, and uh, barrels, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, all the, the paddles for the boats are intricately carved. Everything's intricately carved. It's a little bit like some of the carvings um, you see in the north, the northwestern um, Seattle area, the Native Americans up that way, um, or the uh, or the the Polynesians who carved everything um, around the place. So um, that level of of primitiveness, shall we say? Both will ask who does all the carvings for their boats in the temple and so forth. Those who make them. So every every builder has their own way of carving. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Someone with forgery or something uh, would would be able to tell you a better. Uh, I'd give you a better representation of that if anyone's got any arty type skill, including forgery. Uh, no. Nope. So. No one willing to admit it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have bluff. <laughs> Um, no, Kaz, there's nothing toxic around the place. Um, although the, the, the grass juice, uh, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't go drinking it if I were you. Yep. How do they make the grass juice? What's it come from? Apparently it's, come, apparently it's, in, um, they use various plants, um, with a few, uh, tubers and they, they boil it up in a certain way. Plus, um, f it appears to be the... Um, gall bladder oil from from some of the fish that they catch capture okay a biologist might want to take a sample of that yeah that's a good idea I will take a, a sample idea. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely do that okay Can I analyze it here with my cast, or do I have to take it back somewhere? No, you probably need a proper lab. Okay. The cat, the cast is good for some field stuff, but I mean, yeah, it's. Uh... Okay. But yes. Um. So yeah. Um. Some of the. Uh, Yeah, um, I don't know, what else, don't, know, don't know what else to tell you guys. Do you know what else do you want to do? Uh, well, we were, I think, waiting for Lee, Lee Carr to uh, find out if we could get an audience with the priests. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, that might take a while. Are there any holy sites in the area? Locations? The temple, the uh, pyramid, and the temple, of course. Hmm. Or do you mean other than the village? Well, other well, than that is what I meant, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other than the village, uh, no, there, there uh, does not appear to, to, to appear to be. Both will ask the uh, the females tending to the druggies if the druggies ever escape their pens. Oh, occasionally they get out, yeah. Perhaps Vogue could uh, help them make their pens more secure. Oh, yeah, you know, you'd have a go if you want. I mean, it, it, it's not much to it. They're, um, yeah, I said they it's money, but wood, wood posts and power and wood railings, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, something nice to make their life easier. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, you you want to do something like that, it's up to you. Yeah, we'll improve uh, their fences. 
I might know a way we could probably kick some clues loose, but it's, well, not evil or anything. Maybe slightly unethical, but wouldn't do any lasting harm. Ah, spoken like a true, a true evil scientist. Famous <laughs> last words. Right. What could possibly go wrong? Ah, yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Exactly. What are you thinking? What are you thinking of? Well, I could. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Um, when we have a moment and he's not doing anything, I'm gonna create an illusion in the mind of Lee Ka, of like a much bigger, fancier more godly uh, Heliope that he can have a conversation with. And basically, I mean, we can play out the conversation if you want, but basically I'm just going to say, yes, I'm a manifestation of your gods, the people who put you here, and I've sent these, these this other group here to help you find, you know, our true, des your true destiny or something, so I want you to to be nice to them, and, and nothing is sacred from them, and you can show them everything and tell them everything. Give me a, uh, give me a roll. Okay, um, let's see. Ooh, my first roll. Yeah, no lasting harm. Let's see about that. Yeah. Um, okay, so I click on the di dice next to illusion suggest. Yep. Success, I mean. Yep, 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 yep. It should work. I don't even know what's a good roll and what's a bad roll. Uh, if it's zero mm -hmm. or below, that's good. If it's above zero, that's not so good. Oh, uh, darn it. Um, let me look at the and roll just, just quickly. You don't want to roll 96 to 100, because that's really bad. So below zero is good, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, let me see what it says in the rules here for this. Sorry, I'm not familiar with this interface yet. Oh, no, that's okay. fine. Characters. Don't worry about that. You'll get there. Uh, I know I saw it around here a minute ago. Where do I, Where is that one where I can call up the list of skills? Uh, the website? No, there's. it's in here somewhere in Fantasy Grounds. I know I saw it. Um, like your abilities? Earlier. Yeah, your abilities tab might be what you're looking for. Um, no, I see it, I see it. Um, I, mind control? No, this is illusion generation. Yeah, let me look on the website. Or story entries. Ah, uh, that was it, story entries. Um, so, I, I guess it calculated the success correctly, but... Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't know if like a five, like if it's over zero, it's just a complete failure, or like does that give him a bonus to resist or something like that? Oh, you'll find that out in a minute. Is that, is that what you're after? Sorry. Okay. Well, he he has to if 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 the illusion succeeded, he have to he has to make a logic check with a penalty of five times the level of the illusion, which would be well one, so five, yeah. mm -hmm. um, or he'll figure it out. So. He has to make a log check with a penalty of five. With a penalty of five. Yep. And he made it. Well, he doesn't. He 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 he, he, he looks at this 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 um, um, uh, image rather scornfully. Um, um, <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't. I I don't think it was successful. Well, it wasn't successful in convincing him, but if I, well, if I succeeded in making the illusion and he succeeds in disbelieving it, it says, um, if, if the check is successful, mm -hmm. he'll know it's not real, but might worry that he's seeing things. So he doesn't know it's me. He might be no, like, what am know. I seeing that for? No, he doesn't know it's you. No, he doesn't know it's okay. you. Um, in fact, he's looking rather suspiciously at a, at a, um, uh, some sort of fluid he's been drinking. <laughs> Darn, it was worth a try. But yes. Oh, that would have been so cool if I had succeeded. Well, you know, at least you I didn't, succeed. like, uh, say what you were trying to say in his mind out loud. Right? Yeah, that would have been worse. 
Oh, well, I'm fresh out of ideas now. Yeah, I think um, probably wait till, you know, uh, I settle in for the evening, wait till the, we hear from the priest. Um, and then maybe in the morning, if nothing's happened, we could see if Leek, Leekar, Leeka, um, wants us to go farming or hunting or exploring with them. Mm-hmm. I don't really have anything, any other ideas. I think our net's best thing to do is a tribute, no? Right, if we want to see the priest, we want to go up, we got to give them a tribute. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. But, but I mean, the few technology items I have, I was saving until we actually talked to one of the priests. I don't even know what it is they would want. Probably things like shovels and axes. Everflame, flashlights, compasses. Right, like grenades. Those are things that yeah, compass. Would, compass. The, the compass is probably not. I mean, what probably would work on this compass? planet. Uh, it would. I mean, every planet's got a magnetic. Well, almost every planet's got a magnetic field. Um, but certainly the Everflame and thing and yeah, things like that um, might be worthwhile. Um, well, right on dusk, um, the uh, the two uh, the two towers out the river um, at eighteen um, flame um, uh, starts at the top of those two towers. Uh, controlled flame, not they're not on fire, um, and um, a uh, uh, a drum beat can be heard um, from across the water, from out towards the towers. Um, uh, uh, um, slowly, a lot of the heliotes start um, start to gather around. Oopsie daisy. Around. Uh, this area here um, and you can see after a, a couple of minutes you can see some sort of um, procession uh, if you look carefully um, from uh, the hut tower at 24 to 19 and then down to 18 and 16 and then back in towards the towards the shoreline Yeah, I'm with Cerise. I'm going to go congregate with them to see what's going on. Yeah, me too. Why not? Um, you also, in addition to the, um, in addition to the drum beat, um, you, they also start um, what sounds like um, wooden horns uh, being blown. Um, So yeah, um, all the heliates basically gather along the route from the river complex bridge to the door of the building in front of the uh, the pyramid. Um, a heliate dressed in what appears to be some sort of ceremonial attire steps from the doorway in the highest tower of the river complex and starts across the bridge. As he passes through the complex, he is joined by six other uh, six others. You can see that they all carrying various pieces of what appear to be technological equipment made from some artificial materials. They proceed into building 25 uh, and up the wooden walkway to the platform at the pyramid's summit. The other villages have followed and now basically surround the pyramid. On the highest platform, the leader of the Heliops removes a red and black striped rod from his robe and extends it down into what looks like some sort of opening. There is a flash of light. All the onlookers cry out in awe. The leader and one of his party reach out placing their hands into the well hole, whatever it is, at the top of the pyramid. 
uh, the strange light flashes again and the two heliopes sway happily as though they are enjoying the contact. The others in the lead group now approach the opening two at a time and stretch out their hands to the flash of light. When they finish, heliopes from the crowd bring objects to the leader who examines them. Some of the heliopes are allowed to mount the platform and allowed to perform the strange ceremony. Others are turned away. When all have had their turns, the gathered the gathering, I should say, breaks up and the lead party returns out to the buildings on the river. What kind of uh, tributes got people to go up the stairs and which ones turned them away? You can't really tell any difference, but, you know. Any idea what the light source could have been? I mean, laser, infrared, electrical, etc. Uh, well, it wasn't infrared. Um, because infrared won't show up as it won't show up as visible. Um, and I mean, you're too I far away. Any type of okay. Yeah, I see. Too far away for for a chemical analysis. Cat. Yeah, but not like if a chemist saw a explosion that was clearly something that they knew, then. Yeah, if you, you see magnesium burn, you see magnesium burn, like that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it no, you wasn't don't obvious like, like that. that. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. Um, Lee Carr, by the way, uh, is basically standing not too far away from you during part of the ceremony, and he uh, basically um, imparts the following information during out th throughout the ceremony um, that uh, the pyramid is the spot most sacred to the Heliopes and only priests and those Heliopes making appropriate sacrifices are allowed on its platform. Uh, obviously, it's something you already knew, but the priests live out on the river. Um, in the huts on the river are stored many religious objects and of, of obviously no one but the priests are allowed near them. Uh, and the gods live in the sky uh, the flash of light, which gives a pleasant sensation to all Heliopes, comes from a gift left for them by the gods. Um, by the time the ceremony is over, darkness has basically fallen. Um, light around the village is provided by cooking fires. Um, and of course, um, there's a couple of um, tiki torch type uh, torches um, along the river platforms leading out to the huts um, so that priests don't walk off the edge for example um, of the uh, of the, the, the platforms um, pretty much once the ceremony is over most families heliops uh, move back to their their huts around the village uh, and the whole the whole village quietens down for the night um, as you would expect um, there are a couple of Heliopes wandering around. Um, they seem to be wandering around in a pattern. Uh, Jazz, you reckon that um, they're on on basic, not not on patrol, but they're basically on guard duty, um, and they appear to be young males. Um, so that might be one of the things they're supposed to be doing is just keeping an eye out for any anything that that, that would attack the village in the night. Um, um, Lee Carr, by the so Lee Carr, by the way, uh, lives in uh, Hut 9, uh, just nearby you guys. By coincidence? Or not so much by coincidence? Um, ask him, ask Lee Carr, if, um, where do the people get the tribute from? Do they make it, or do they find it, or? Make it, normally. Make, make, it, make it, grow it, gather it. And we couldn't tell what type of items they were giving. I thought it, they were like technology items. Now the priests had technology items, relics, probably. The Heliate villages uh, were 
food items or craft items, things like that. Okay. Has Lika been uh, accepted up on top of the platform? He did. Go, he was one of the ones that was that was uh, that was accepted up. Yes. Now he did. He did go up and leave you at one sp one stage. Uh, is he willing to to uh, describe his experience up there? Uh, touched by the gods. What did it feel like? Like did rapture. You see or hear anything? No, like rapture. This this is how the the poly box is interpreting it. Right, right. But he, he, he when he talks about it, he sways slightly. As in, you know, um, you know how a young kid might, uh, when you when you talk to that young kid about what they enjoyed at the at the circus, they might sway back and forth as is in pleasure. Right, right. That that type of thing. Um, night is uh, cool. Um, you're glad you have your weather blankets with you. Um, it's uh, not cold at all, but it's, it's chilly. Um, the forest uh, noises are strange. You are on an alien planet, don't forget. Um, even if you can breathe the atmosphere and drink the water and eat the food. Um, yeah. You can hear the sound of crickets, or the equivalent of crickets. Um, various night noises from the forest. Um, every now and then you'll hear the tread of somebody walking, walking by, probably one of the guards. Um, I don't know what I can tell you guys. What <laughs> Do we want to have our own watch? Maybe we just sleep. <laughs> or maybe you just go sleep, yeah. Yeah, Doc know, is I pretty much interested in what Max has to say, so. Actually, Max is not there. Hmm. Is he supposed to sleep in our cabin? Yes. Not there. Hmm. I think you broke up there, Matt. Sorry. Yes, Max is Max and the rest of the eight of you are supposed to be well, the eight of you were, were given this cabin to, 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 to rest up in. To sleep in. Um, looking around, nice looking around, there's only seven of you here. Hmm. What was the last time, or where was the last time we saw him? Um, you saw him just before the ceremony, but none of you can recall seeing him since. Is it too late to check in with Leaker? Oh, it's late. Um, how tired are we? Are we, if we don't get rest now, are we going to start suffering from like some kind of fatigue or anything like that? Possibly. You guys want to poke around and see if we find Max? Or just go to sleep and look for him in the morning? No, find him. Okay. Yeah, I don't like missing somebody. Let's put up and look for them. Um, Shaggy, Scooby, you guys go and the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs>
Are we concerned that he's off doing something dodgy, or are we concerned that he might be in trouble? Because uh, we will attack this differently, depending yeah. on what we suspect. Um, technically, they're not mutually exclusive. I do yeah. think he's doing something dodgy. Because we could just... He, I, I would assume he would have a chronicom, so trying to reach him on that would be the first step if we weren't trying to catch him in the act. Uh, anybody well, was thinking of that. Does have like a GPS tracker? Well, able to backtrack? Possi possibly, but there are no GPS satellites in the orbit. In orbit. <laughs> yeah, let's just try the Chronicom first. Okay. Yeah, can we raise him? Uh, no, you no, you are not successful in raising Max on the Chronochromes. Um, the Chronochrome give us an indication of whether he's out of range or just ignoring us. Like, do we no. get that feedback? Okay. Nope. Is the Explorer nope. still there? Yes. Uh, well, assuming, we assuming you go, assuming you go, look, it is yes. Yeah, that, that's what uh, Jazz was thinking too. First thing came to mind is check out the explorer still there and take a look inside, see if everything is still in place. Mm hmm. And if everything's still in place, where, where else? What would be the first place to look? I don't know. I can't imagine where he might have gone places that we can't get to like tent five and the yeah. priest platform <laughs> right or into the jungle yeah. i guess maybe he's visiting his girlfriend uh what girlfriend his helio what girlfriend we don't judge track? avatar all over again <laughs> avatar all over. there you go <laughs> Yeah, I don't, th I don't really see Max as the Avatar um, <laughs> hero, you know what I mean? Do we have a tracker? Electronic or human? Electronic human, or biological? Human, footprints, footprints, footprints. Bootprints, perhaps. Do we have, like, a survival guy who can track people? Yeah, Daniel. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone with environmental skill? Was that Daniel? Yeah. Yes. Ah. Well, we have three options. We can wait for him to come back, or we can go out looking for him. Well, those are really the two options. But our overall strategy, we can either A, try and convince the Heliopes that they should trust us and tell us all about things and lead us to their sacred places and stuff, or we could just say, screw it, sneak off in the night ourselves and, like, break into that temple to see what's in there. Well, we probably don't want to piss off the whole village just yet. Yeah, That'll not yet. Come later. <laughs> It'll probably <laughs> come later. <laughs> Dear OD. Make sure we have the heavy weaponry before we do that. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, so there, there are there are guys uh, Helio patrolling around, just keeping an eye on the village, right? Yeah. Well, apparently there are. Yeah. Let, let Let's go approach them and and see if they've seen anything. Ask if they've seen anything. Okay, you can do that. Everybody going, or just you? I think uh, we'll probably have more than just Jazz. Yeah. Jazz I, think, I think we all want to go. Yeah. yeah, I definitely like to go. Focus sleeping. <laughs> you started sleeping before we noticed that match wasn't there, so. So you're staying asleep, are you, Doc? Mm-hmm. Okay. No one's gonna wake me, so. I'll kick him. <laughs> and then he goes back to sleep. <laughs> dear, I dear. Uh, Jazz, Jazz says to Cerise, eh, all draw the sights of the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're poofs, right? <laughs> they like their perfumes. 
Yeah. Well, that's true, yeah. Only because it makes them drunk in the same way that alcohol makes a human drunk. Jazz gets hit in the back of the head with a force axe pole, and thankfully it wasn't turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Alright, so who's heading out of the hut? Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll head out. Ben Everybody's Bambus. heading out. We'll head the out. doctor as well. Bambus. Nobody wants to miss out. Okay. Oh, um, just to mention, Matt, um, mm -hmm. if not now, then a little earlier, uh, Jazz will have done a little bit of first aid on himself to fix up that bit of damage from the rock that hit him on the head. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Bulk will go with them because they're just so making so much noise you can't get to sleep. Yeah. Alright, so um, you head out uh, and eventually without too much trouble come across a couple of the young male heliopes who are on in inverted commas patrol. Greetings, strangers. Uh, we all have to go to the bathroom uh, together. No, ask them. <laughs> Greetings. We are looking for our companion, Max. Ah. Max has gone to serve the gods. It's a great honor Whoa, to serve the what, gods. What does that How mean? Couple, of the, some of the priests um, claimed Max to go and serve the gods. Out How wonderful! On the when will he be back? He you won't. Know that means sacrifice. <laughs> no, it doesn't actually. I'm just kidding. Like, I'm just expecting to get eaten at some point. Yeah. Like what? Okay. What, what what do we know, or what do we deduce of serving the gods mean? Uh, well, basically, probably some sort of, um, in Max's case, be some sort of slave thing out uh, serving the priests out on the, the river complex. Um, but, I mean, the, the Heliates themselves consider it a great honour uh, to serve the gods in that regard. Um But once somebody has been chosen to serve the gods, they they they're never seen on they're not, not not never seen again. They're never seen on land again. They're always out only out on the um yeah on the river the river complex. Huh. Hmm. Well, I guess that means we don't have to split our share. <laughs> Yeah, but do you think the Starship pilot is going to take off without Max? Yeah. No, we need to we need to find him, but I don't think we go out at night. Yeah, agreed. I guess it depends on whether you think the trail will go cold or not. I guess if we know we'll find him out on the water, then we can find him there tomorrow, but... Why not, not keep a watch on the... On the uh... well, let's say goodnight to the, the patrolling youths and have our discussion mm -hmm. elsewhere sleep well yeah we don't want to violate their priestly stuff without without other options I would suggest keeping a watch on the priest's residency on the well, that and no longer, nobody should go alone anywhere anymore. Stick in pairs. We need partners, perhaps. Buddy system? You're not trying to crack on the cat, are you? Or holding hands, at least. <laughs> I'll go over and I'll, uh, you know, meld with Babu. <laughs> okay, that 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 guy that that's even more disturbing. <laughs> that's even more disturbing. 
right, you said to get a buddy. I, I would say uh, Australopithecus will stick together, but they might take that literal. They might. So what are you going to do, guys? Guess we'll head to bed and then uh, ask more about Max. Max and his is being chosen in the morning. Yeah, but keep a watch on the. Can we do like a watch with everyone still getting the rest they need? Oh, I don't see why not. Yeah, I definitely think we need to keep our own watch inside the hut. And maybe watch their the temple on the water got to be a little crack in the wall somewhere with a good with a good uh, view of the thing. Oh yeah, yeah. There is. Would be, yeah. How do you get chosen for this? Hey, the sorry? Priest cho choose you? Or is it based on these gifts you're given? Sorry, what are you asking? I'm asking, yes. did we see if Max gave them something to get on? Maybe he's trying to get out there to uh, basically cause right. stir up trouble himself. How, how was he chosen? Uh, what what criteria? Oh, you got no. As far you, as don't, we know? you don't. You don't, You have no idea. All we know is that the priest took him to serve God, right? Serve yeah. the gods. Uh, yep. God. Or to see. Or to serve to God. <laughs> How to eat forty humans? Serve man. To serve How to man, cook right. for forty humans? How to cook for forty humans? So yeah, it's, I assume we go back to our building and uh, we'll keep a rotating watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, nothing happens during the night of interest. Um, with the dawn, um, people start moving around, moving about. The fishermen uh, head out onto the lake to fish. Um, and life in the Heliot village continues. So, do we f find Leekar in the morning? Uh, Leekar's in his hut, but yeah, eventually you find him, yeah. Does he know what happened to Max? Yeah, Max is gone to serve the gods. How wonderful. Can you tell us more? Yeah, what more do you need to know? How was he chosen? He chose himself. Is that something he does for the rest of his life, or...? Yes. So he volunteered. He did. Did someone well, ask him if he wanted to volunteer, or he just did it spontaneously? Well, he... he went out to the priest huts um so oh yeah. he was trying to get into the priest hut well he went out along the he went out uh, on on the priest walk oh obviously he wanted to serve the gods obviously um cat would like to have a honor. search around uh, the hut to see whether he left a note or something like break me out in three days. I'm going looking. <laughs> um. uh, give, it a, give me a roll. Oh, gee. Yeah. the, the not dice a thing. aren't not being a thing, kind. Right? Not being kind. Yeah, no, I fix. I fix the dice engine. <laughs> Do you mean fixed as in corrected or fixed as in fixed? <laughs> some of column A, some of column B. <laughs> Little of column A, some of column B, you know, whatever works. Any word from the uh, priests if uh, we can chat with them? We're quite mm. interested. Yes, one of the priests will, will meet with you this afternoon.
Wonderful. Well, maybe you can shed some light on this. In the meantime, gentlemen, what would you like to do? Formulate an escape strategy, just in case. Spoken like a true role player. I am expecting things to go sideways. Also spoken like a true role player. Might be prudent for someone to wait with the explorer, or if we're going to be doing everything with two of us, then take shifts. Uh, I'm not sure why we're having shifts. There doesn't seem to be any danger. Well, Until there is. Matt's so volunteered the... to go serve the priests, which is where they keep the relics, which we're trying to kind of get. So... I don't think he volunteered. I think he was trying to sneak in and got caught. Of course, that makes me think, well, why well, don't we just all volunteer, and then we'll if, go wherever If Max he got went. caught... They would come for us. Not necessarily. I think we he got caught, but they didn't realize he was thing yet ourselves. But well, I think he got caught in the sense that they saw him when they, he didn't want them to. But I don't think they like captured him or were angry. They were probably like, "Oh, Max, you're here to serve the gods. Cool, come on." So I don't think they're mad at him. But I don't think they discern his true purpose. Yeah, and then they just don't let him leave. Because why would he want to leave? He's serving the gods. Exactly. exactly. We still need to prepare for the worst. <laughs> well, I think what you need is to kind of get an idea needed. of what the uh, schedules are for people around here. And figure out what we might be able to do if we do need to break him out. I just expect everything to go sideways. Well, I mean, it, it, it's only, they're only wooden huts and wooden, you know, planks and that. Um, so, we got ever yeah. Yeah. It's not like they're steel and concrete. Because that would be a great crime, steel and concrete. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant the huts aren't steel and concrete. So oh, they aren't steel and concrete. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I thought you said they're not steel and concrete. No, steel ain't as in, no, as in metal and gotcha. artificial rock. I don't think rock. they're stealing concrete either. No, I don't think they're doing that either, no. It does seem like kind of a pointless crime. Well, it, depends, it depends how rare concrete is, I suppose. Yeah, I, I think uh, unless uh, Leekar has something for us to do in the morning, I suspect we just wait for the meeting with the priest. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's all we really can do, unless we want to do something more radical. Radical how? I don't know. We could break into the temple. We could um, uh, could walk out on the pier ourselves and say, hey, we decided we want to serve the god too and get sent wherever Max got sent. Um, I don't know. Yeah, except, except for part of serving the gods might be up all our technology. Now, I'm not suggesting we have we do any of those things. I'm just saying, there's always options. Yeah, I try to think outside burn the box. The to the ground. <laughs> We're meeting with the priest, so until then, like I said, I would uh, just sit down and you know see what the guard patterns are, what they're you know are is there a pattern to how they patrol, and is oh, there well something no that looks like a weak spot on the uh, temple if we have to get in. But okay, you well don't have to do it overtly. You don't have to do it, you know, sit there with measuring sticks and stuff like that to let everybody know that's what we're doing. But you just relax and wander around and check things out. And yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Um, there is no pat there's no guards during the day. It's only at night. Um, it's that's obvious from just a, 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 a short observation around the village. Um, Um, there are people in the gardens. There are people tending to the uh, dopies. Um, 
uh, there are fishermen uh, out on the the lake fishing. Um, yeah. Um, what else did you want to do, guys? I guess we pretty much agreed to just wait to talk to the priest, sit around and fish or something. I do more or work you on the fences. On the yeah, okay. Did you want to do what Babu suggested with the temple and that, or? You mean uh, timing the guards and things like that? Uh, well, that and something with the temple built. Yeah, you know, checking out temple building and things like that. Well, I didn't think they'd let us go inside. I mean, if you mean w looking around the outside, I guess we could. Oh, well, I'm asking if you guys want to do that, yeah. Maybe one or two people, because, I mean, if all of us are doing it, someone might get yeah. suspicious. That's a good idea. Yeah, two I people, Babu can take somebody. What's the equivalent of the perception skill in this game? Uh, an average of your, your logic and your intuition. Is there a search skill? Yeah, probably average would be pretty average. So, Babu and who? I suppose. Yeah, there's both. Well, Vok is an uh, engineer. He might be able to notice weak spots or places that might be important if we try to gain access. Places Jazz could blow up. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying anything could go wrong at any moment. And does, usually. Alright, so Babu, Babu and Volk, is that, is that, that, that's who's, who's doing this? Or, or other people? Or, or what's, the, what's the go? Um... Well, you're, you're right. Um, we can't all go. It would look suspicious, I guess. So, just pick two people and go. Who who volunteers to go case the, the temple? Well, that initial Vulcan gear down there, Babu. the the bigger one. I'd say we should just sit down on that and watch the fishermen. And while you're there, you can watch all the right. temple. So Babu wants to go case the temple. Anybody else? I'll go with Babu. Okay. I'll ask Jazz if he wants to go do some maintenance on the Explorer with me. Yeah, sure. I'll do a bit of work <laughs> on that Explorer. <laughs> Make sure the heavy laser fully traverses, you know, all that sort of thing. Make sure he knows yeah, how to shoot it properly. Make sure, make sure it rotates 360 like it's supposed to. Mm. Okay. Um, so, if Jazz... Sorry, I'll start again. If Babu and Volk do a, a general circuit of the pyramid and temple area, yes. I want to, yeah, do a circuit of the temple area, but I want to end up there at that circle on the pier, and uh, kind of. Oh, like you actually want to go? You actually want to go out? You actually want to go out on the pier, do you? Right where the circle is, not all the way out. Just sit on the pier, kind of like right. on the dock of the bay, and I'm going to watch the fishermen and look at the temple. The yeah, temple no the water. Nobody's out on the pier. think that means you would be volunteering. Hmm. Maybe we should just sit somewhere else. Yeah, maybe right next to the pier? We'll sit around the well there near the pier. Okay. All right, well, can I'll I stay get in House 11. Mm-hmm. Volk and Volk and Babu, can I get you guys to give me in the um, search checks, please, as you do a circum. Where does one find that? Uh, it's an average of your intelligence, of your intuition, and your logic, right? You have to create it yourself. Okay. Uh, well, let me. You can just start a die roll in the chat, and then drag it to your hot bar, and then relabel it.
just gonna use that. Whoa! That's not. That's supposed Ooh. to be minus sixty. Don't know how that happened. Yeah, it was a it, it, it oh yeah, I did thing that. I worry about. Okay. Um. Look. Um. The pyramid. Uh. The the the, the temple area. The temple itself is basically a, a a a wooden tube, effectively a square wooden tube. Uh, open it the south end and with the stairs leading out the north end. Okay, that's pretty much it. The pyramid, though, uh, upon closer inspection, uh, intricately carved, as I said, but it appears to be made of planks um, on a frame. Um, um, yeah. And you know there are occasional, occasional gaps in the planks where they don't quite match up properly, or they've been warped over the years by the elements. Either way, um, any kind of like purposely redone anything like to symbol someone has removed these planks and put new no. ones on. No. Oh no, no. No, no, they all they all look about the same. They all look to be weathered about the same. No, none are more weathered than others um, in that regard. Um, but but the 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 it's obvious that the pyramid though is would be hollow, um, not like a, a an Egyptian pyramid which is basically solid stone. Um, this isn't solid wood. It's it's planks on some. So I said. Planks attacked in inverted commas to some sort of frame. Uh, it would be your guess. Um, you said about ten meters high. About ten meters high. Now is that to the top of twenty-eight or to the platform yeah, on twenty-seven? That's, that's about the s to the platform on twenty, on uh, on top of twenty-seven. You know, twenty-eight is another couple meters above that again. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do, guys? I think we're going to wait for the pr meeting with the priest. Unless anyone else has an idea. Well, could you make out what was inside the pyramid? What it was covering? I'm guessing it was built mm -hmm. over something. Yeah. Me what too. is number two? And that might be the reason why they settled here. Sorry, number two? Yeah, there's two oh, no. like fields. Yeah, they're fields. They're, they're plots. They're garden plots. How thick is the uh, uh, vegetation? Uh, they're garden plots. They're not very. Well, I mean, if it was like some type of corn type thing, we could hide in Oh, I see, I see what you're getting at. Um, could you hide in them? Yeah, you could hide in them. Could you move through them? Not without making some sort of racket, some sort of visual way. Depends what time of day it is, of course. Yeah, I'll just like to point something out uh, out of character because the the doc wouldn't do this, but fire fire would burn a pyramid, <laughs> would it not? Yeah. Uh, possibly. The trouble is getting it started. It's pr they're pretty heavy. They're pretty heavy planks. Um, it's pretty it's pretty heavy structure. I mean, it's wood made of wood, but it's a pretty heavy structure. So you need some. You need to get some. You need to have some way of getting it started. Um, you know, an accelerant of some sort. Um. The like a fire, um, a fire grenade, for example, would probably do it. I got a few of those. Yeah, um, I know you have. That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> the uh, platform 1920 out on the water, does yeah. that it, it, does that go down into the water, or is that elevated up. above the water? Up. goes up. Right, yeah. but, I mean, uh -huh. can you see underneath it? It just has oh, pilings yeah. holding it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a couple of meters above the water. Um, seventeen uh, B um, is actually sloped. Uh, uh, gets higher and higher uh, the further you get. You get towards 
20, 21, 19, and that, that, that 19, 20, 21, 22 are a series of, um, uh, a series of um, stories, series, series of layers um, to where until finally 24 is the highest point um, above the water. So I'll go ahead and use my magna goggles. I want to inspect that out there and see mm -hmm. if there's anything sticking up out of the water other than wooden pilings. i.e. an antenna or a crashed ship or something like that. Well, out in the river. Yeah, out in the river. Did they build their temple out in the river over top of something that I can tell? Oh, 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 oh. Um, well, you can see underneath everything. There's nothing going... I mean, there's only pylons going down. You can't see anything in the water itself underneath the, underneath the, um, the, 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 the buildings. Um... Um, 24 is a tower that's about it rests about 23 meters above the surface of the water um, it appears like a number of huge tree trunks have been lashed together into ties um, that forms the pilings that support this thing um, the 24 is about 10 meters in diameter, about 3 meters tall, so the roof's about 26 meters above the waterline. Um, although that's difficult to see because of um, the building in front of it. Right. Um, um, but the, the building in front of it is not quite as tall. Um, the roof, uh, the roof of 21, for example, or 22. Um, is um, yeah exactly but that's a kilometre out don't forget you know that's a kilometre so that line isn't quite that good yeah uh, can I borrow your magna goggles for a second mm -hmm. I'm also going to take a close look at the pilings beneath the piers um, like bet between 18 16 and 18 are they just like widely spaced pylons holding it up or is there a net is what I'm asking for some reason, no, the whole thing no. looks like a pen or a cage to me. Yeah, like no. why else build uh, it, it that way? It doesn't appear to be a net. They just they're reasonably wi reasonably widely spaced pilings. Um, the two the two fire towers at eighteen um, are um, about ten meters in diameter. Um, they're fire towers. Yeah, that's where the fire was on top. Eighteen. Oh, Remember there, I were, there were fire on top of them. Okay, right, yeah. right, right. So, fire towers. Um, 16's uh, uh, quite, I mean, yeah, 16's quite low to the, to the, to the river. Um, uh, 18's a bit higher, 19's a bit higher, and so on and so on and so on. Um, tell you what you can spot with the magna goggles. Um, there's a secondary, there's a second small, small pier coming off building 16. Um, it's only about 10 metres long and about 3 metres wide. Um, um, it appear that appears to be purely a boat dock. Uh, it's only about 30 centimetres above the water, about a foot above the water. Um, there's also appears to be some sort of small primitive wooden crane centred on the dock. Hmm. What so they need a crane for barrels, maybe. Don't know. It's anybody hard to see. I mean, anybody? Watch. Anybody coming and going, and then also how the fishermen? Do the fishermen go anywhere near the complex? No, they generally. I mean, they generally don't go that far from shore. I mean, um, they they go up to a kilometre from shore, but they they don't. They they tend to stay. You know, several tens of meters away from the, uh, 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 away from the um, the platform complex. Well, I don't know anything for sure, but I'm pretty convinced that there's something, either under the water near the pier, or inside the temple. Right, or something really big that extends from 24 to 28. 
or something like that. Whoa. So maybe they were keeping their god, the sea monster, what? in the pen there, but... A hundred kilometers? I, I, sorry, a thousand odd meters? Yeah, you know, it could be okay. a really big ship. You know, well, um, even the... I, I mean, I think from memory, the, even the um, the big battle cruisers, um, the, the three big battle cruisers are only about 650, 700 meters long each. Um, they're the, the ones the UPF has, you know. Um, well, it might be ancient technology. <laughs> it could be ancient yet highly advanced technology. Right. That's a long way. I mean, I don't. I don't even think one of the American aircraft carriers is that big. A thousand meters. Three More thousand than a thousand feet. meters. Yeah. Hmm. That's closer to eleven hundred meters, actually, when you go from twenty-eight all the way out to that, all the way out there. Anyway. Yeah, the longest. Uh, yeah, that's only uh, three hundred forty-two meters. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think the biggest aircraft carriers are that big. <laughs> that's a long way. It's over. Well, it's almost three quarters of a mile. That would be like the Death Star of alien spaceship. Well, well what quite, about yeah. <laughs> what about looking between the planks on the pyramid, seeing what's in there? You think yeah, anybody you would that. be offended? I don't know, as long as you do it surreptitiously, I don't see why not. Hey, just a little FYI, guys. USS Ronald Reagan, only 330 meters long. Mm. The Enterprise is the 342. Yeah, the big container ships are 400, and then there's plans for larger ones, but yeah, I understand <laughs> it's big. It's big. It's big. Or you could do like uh, Airbus did and make an airplane so big you can't land it anywhere and go to a <laughs> gate because none of the gates fit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Reminds me of the, yeah, so of the Spruce Goose. You were saying yeah. that? That's a big plane. Uh, Volk? Maybe Volk and uh, if Babu doesn't want to go, I'll go with him. Maybe technical skill, we can identify what's underneath the pyramid. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, the pyramid is made of planks. So right. if we look around the base where it might be contacting the ground, there might be some weak boards. We well, there were... to remove surreptitiously at night. And yeah, at night, but in. they said that there were some gaps between the planks. So let that we oh, can look through. Like, so let's yeah. start there. Okay. Yeah, small ones we can look through. So let's start with that. Okay. And well, we'll give you me two do that, and I'll keep an eye on you so that if somebody starts uh, doing something, you know, pointing you out, gathering to stop you or something, I can kind of move to intercept and contain things, sort of. Mm. I, I swear I only clicked one. that once. Yeah, I know, the first one I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Uh, another, uh, uh, give me a search roll, please, Volk. Just more spot check, same thing. Okay. All right, there is something inside the pyramid. It's pretty hard to make out because there's not much light. Um, but there's something that broadly... Um, maybe, oh, it's, how do I describe this? It looks somewhat, kind of, sort of, maybe like some sort of ray, as in stingray, without the tail. So um, definitely not a frame. Oh, there's a frame inside the thing, but it's it's a hollow frame. Does that make sense? Yeah. This frame's built above whatever this thing is. Um, I've lost it. Hang on, I've lost it. It's their god that they caught in the river. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's maybe n not quite as tall as, as the pyramid itself. Um, maybe. 
15 or so metres wide and uh, long and maybe 10 metres wide at its widest point. Uh, it's got a large, uh, for want of a better word, a want of a better description, it's got a large fin uh, mer about two thirds of the way along merges with some sort of hemispherical uh, art object artifact that that looks rather like yeah it does it looks rather like a, a recessed headlight on a vehicle a real big one though you know like a searchlight size big big one does it look um, like it might be uh, flight capable it maybe not it, 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 it's it's awful regular so it's probably not natural um, but it certainly it certainly gives you that impression of um, um, if not if not flying then then, then, then certainly skimming shall we say um, single piece construction or panels rivets it's uh, you can't see you, you can't see there's not enough light to see that by okay um, what if I shine in an infrared light? Then you you'd be, be able to pick up any any heat sources. <laughs> oh what? No. Well, and then I use my scope. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. It, well, you start trying to torch in there. I mean, it, it's it's going to give you um the infrared readings as opposed to the visible light readings but yeah I mean you could try it as long as it doesn't draw too much attention mm. um, um, there are a couple of these he uh, hemispherical um, artifacts on this th on this thing whatever it is does it reach nearly up to the top I'm thinking if they stuck something down that pole down through the roof, maybe they were sticking it into this thing somehow. Possibly. Possibly. Does it seem like there's any point of this ship that uh, touches the the pyramid where it could be an access point to the ship? No, no, but it does reach almost to the ceiling at its highest point. I bet there's a hatch in the top. Yeah, uh, yeah, but my my uh, supposition, I'll share this when we get back, is that I that rod that the head priest pulled out is probably a device that activates maybe a communications antenna, a defense beam, something at low power from the ship, um, and they happen to remember they they respond to what they take extra damage from Sonic, but the other damage they don't. There was a, one of the damages that types that they uh, resisted. Right, Any electrical damage. Happy damage. So, that they seem to be so fond. Yes. Of. So it could well be. Um, oh, what's that? Uh, there's a there's a military oh. weapon on ships that is you know Rail electric. Down? No, no. Uh, an EP. But anyways. The ship electromagnetic could be emitting electromagnetic something. Pulse. Okay, well, okay. Yeah. If it was an if it was an electromagnetic magnetic pulse, all your electrical equipment would be going haywire. Okay. But what if it That's was a directed EMP? Yeah. Well, no such thing. Well, <laughs> it's some kind of like some kind of electromagnetic energy. Obviously, exactly what kind or what frequency or whatever, whatever we don't know. If we wanted to find out, we'd have to, you know. Use live oh, test you. subject. <laughs> live test subject. Electron beam is what I was thinking. Oh, the electron beam. That's what you thought about. Yeah, okay. Well, how many people are there around? How many of these oh, guys? Well, it's it's the daytime, so quite a few. So they'd obviously see if we walked up there, okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, if you walk up there, you'll be spotted. Jazz, did you Do invest in a hollow suit? 
if you do it at night, you'll probably get away with it. But, you know. No. Didn't think to get a hollow suit. Or that other one, the dead suit, or whatever they call it. No. I mean, the funny thing just... is that Neil had one. I don't know. He wouldn't have given that up before he uh, deserted us, unfortunately. <laughs> we did have one of those. Oops, oh well. Alright, I think we've got a good idea. I mean, they said they came from the stars, so, you know, this is artifacts. The question is, is how do we now talk to Max? How do we gain their trust? Um, I'm still a little iffy on just what we're gonna, how we're gonna monetize this whole thing. We don't even know what we're dealing with yet. Um, I think that convincing them to trust us enough to give us access to their sacred artifacts is going to take a long time. Um, if we possible. commit ourselves to like months and months and months and months here, or we do something vaguely unethical like sneak in there. <laughs> or burn um, it down. It, yeah, in te well, burning it down is always a risk because you might burn down whatever's inside. Um, but as far as monetizing, I that yeah. yeah true. As far as monetizing things are concerned, there's plenty of collectors and museums out there who pay top dollar for alien, alien artifacts of any size. I, I mean, if we yeah. want to get in, we, we could. Strip it. If we were going to start a fire on the pyramid, and we don't want the whole place to burn down, start it right there because that's the nearest well. Because starting it on the waterfront the is... I don't know, why are you talking about firing it? Fire, so, fire, fire bad idea. Breaking in, breaking in doesn't do us a whole lot of good unless we think we can fly it, right? Well, I suggest that we wait until nighttime, we go up there, we look through the hatch, we look through the thing, and see what's on top. It might be a hatch, and we can just go down in there without anybody knowing. Yeah, it might be. Um, but I'm, my point is not about finding out what it is, but what do we do with it? I mean, say it's say it's an alien spaceship. That's great. That's worth a lot of money. But Awful are small. we going to steal it from these people? And then if so, how are we going to get it out? I think that's, I mean, they're all good questions, but it's kind of putting the cart before the horse because we don't even know what it is yet or... Maybe we go in it and it's totally busted up and completely non-functional. Maybe we go in it and there's a big button that says launch that we could push. Maybe a lot of things. Okay. We need to know more. Okay. Okay. The only, just for your, just for your edification, the only thing that is that size that is space related as far as you guys are concerned, um, some single man fighters are that size. Um, some very small shuttle slash launches are that size but a f full working ship um yeah. i mean I'm, i mean even the even the even the space fighters aren't aren't jump capable um they're they're spaceships not starships um, right i think what we're looking at is an alien fighter well if that's what it is but i'm saying the smallest practical the smallest practical jump capable ships a uh, um, size 2 Corvette and they're only two or three man ship as it is they're little more than scouts you know even the the proper assault, assault scouts which is the smallest viable warships are the same size as your own um, hull size 3 um, last legs and they yeah, got I think the size gonna, sorry to interrupt I just think that 20. you know we're kind of missing our patron and that if in fact he went down in there it's not like a, a fighter because he there wouldn't be enough space for him and whoever else is down there, right? Well, they said he went onto the docks. Yeah, Max is supposedly serving the gods out on the river complex. So we have two things. We have Matt's and we have this potential spaceship under the pyramid. And we have a meeting with the priests in the afternoon. Yep. So we could meet with the priest to maybe learn more about what's happening with Matt. Um, 
probably not anything about the spaceship. Well, also, one of us could always get up there by by donating some high-tech trinket, right? Well, we don't really know what criteria they use, but it's possible. Let's assume it's not a ceremony. Did we get a look at what kinds of things that were being accepted? Yeah, yeah. who made crafts? And crafting food yeah. items. I could make him a crayon painting. <laughs> Not you go quite for sure. it. Yeah. Based on the level of carvings around the place, I don't think a crayon picture is going to be up to scratch. But that's just oh, Even a special crayon picture. Even a special crayon picture. Yeah. But it's of a kitty. You go, yeah, you're going to uh, pose, are you, cat? Got a lot of cats running around here. You do. <laughs> so what do you want to do, guys? You've got you, you, somebody's just outlined three uh, three possible possible um, courses of action. I propose that we have lunch, wait until our meeting with the priest, meet with him, see what we can find out. Maybe we get some information. In either case, at night we basically flip a coin and either go investigate the ship or go out onto the docks, or possibly split up into two groups and do both. Yeah, splitting up's a pain in the butt for me. Um, yeah, it is. In most, in most cases, so I would... Well, we could probably do both in one night, yeah. depending on what we find. Right, well, the path of least resistance is wait for this priest, and then once we've talked to the priest, yeah, then we can do that. what we're going to do, right? Okay. All right, good. well, if you're going to if you're gonna wait for the priest, yes? Yes. Yes. Um, so, uh, about an hour after lunch, in inverted commas, um, Lokar comes to you and says, uh, it's my pleasure, to, through again, through the, volley, through the polyvox, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ed, Ed Aku, priest of the Heliopes. Uh, and uh, Lokar shows in uh, another um, uh, heliope. Uh, th this second heliope has got a few, is dressed in, in some more ceremonial style um, garb than, than uh, any of the other heliopes you've seen around the place, apart from the ceremony yesterday. Um, he holds up his, uh, his right pincers and says, Greetings. I understand you wish to speak to me. Greetings, yes. Thank you for seeing us. Um, we would like to know more about your culture and your history and your people and your religion. Um, perhaps you could enlighten us. Do you know where you came from? Or I hear you were descended from the gods from the sky. Do you know why they did that, or...? The gods brought us here from the stars. Why, we cannot say. We just know that they did. The gods then left us. And we have been here ever since. Did they leave anything else here besides you? Only the tools of the gods. Or holy like relics, or technological right. items. No, I know, I'm just trying to think of how to phrase it with him. Um, Do your holy texts tell you when they will come back? No. No, the gods, the gods, uh, there's no, 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 there's no knowledge of when the gods will return, or even if they will return. These tools of the gods, do you have many of them? We saw one. Like you, you've seen, you, Jen, the player, you've seen more than one. Uh, you've seen one up close, that's the one that uh, oh. Lokar's got. Uh, the, the, the priests uh, during the ceremony yesterday had, 
had uh, were carrying. Oh, that's some. right. They had a second mm. one, yeah. They had more than just one. They had one each. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. Um, Does he happen to have it with him? Is it like a walking staff or something? Nope. Nope. No. Hmm. The, uh, what was I going to say? Um, Would you mind if we yes. looked at some of these tools? If we don't touch them, just look. Um, I'm sorry, only the only the uh, only the the priests are allowed to uh, to 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 view the um, view the uh, the tools of the gods. Apart from those, uh, very few which were passed down to various families by the gods when when uh, when we were first brought to this place. And he indicates Lokar when he says that. We're, we're, I'm very curious um, what more you might know of your gods. Um, I don't know if you know, that, but we also too come from the stars like your gods do and are quite curious about them if our peoples may have met before. Mm. We, ha we too have wondered this when Maximilian first arrived. We've been pondering. We have been causing us to ponder for, for, for many moons. We do not know. But our gods do not look anything like, you. They look like, us. I think to myself, it's a very strange religion where, all they know about the religion is that gods brought us here, and like nothing else. <laughs> Well, you're, you're it's a brief religion, well. if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> are, are there stories of your gods as to what travels they made or who their enemies were or their friends, their allies? They traveled far across the, across the heavens. But there is no word on their friends or their enemies. I personally believe that the gods created all that you see, including yourselves, uh, on this world and on others. They were before any of us. In other words, you're getting the idea that the, that that they may be the ancients um, and for those who have not read enough background information yet uh, the ancient there's a legend um, that uh, a, an ancient race of aliens um, uh, once inhabited this area of the galaxy uh, every now and then you people will find ancient I mean really old uh, ruins on moons or out of the way locations on planets and things like that. Um, things, th you know, things like stone hinges um, or, or you know, um, buildings which are almost been blasted back to to their constitution, uh, sand particles, things like that. So, uh, so yeah. Could try my illusion trick on him. Maybe I'd roll better this time. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Don't forget these guys are aliens, and you don't know how your illusion uh, ability is going to affect their their mental pathways. Yeah, I think we have to reason our way through this part. When when we leave, is there any interest in in one of you going to the stars with us? No, no, we are. We, 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 we have paradise here. Why would we leave? This is where the gods placed us. This is where we should be. Ah, it would only be to leave and then come back. Again, but you to ha what do purpose? have a wonderful place here. Knowledge. We have everything we need to know. We, we honor your tradition, but. That that tradition of only letting priests see the holy 
objects, perhaps you could make an exception in this case, since we also come from the stars. We might be able to no. tell you more, something more about your gods. I find that very hard to believe, no. And he shakes his head. Not in anger, more in, oh, you foolish child. Uh, yeah, it looks like you're going to have to just kill the whole village. <laughs> what of the nomads? Ah, uh, they are foolish. They, they have turned their back on the gods, what the gods want. They will come around. We will teach them. Or perhaps or they later. might be wished to join us when we leave. Oh. Uh, I dare, I, I don't think so. What are we comprehending, dude? Uh, they just are if foolish, I could after all. figure out their system. Sure. Figure out something something underlying here that I'm not thinking of. Yeah. You want to give me a roll? That's not a roll. I know. I've mistyped it. <laughs> That's a calculation. That's a roll. I figured yeah. it was low chance, but... Yeah. No, it's worth a try. Um, yeah, no, look... Um, the attitude seems to be um, that 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 they are uh, the height of civilization, which they are actually on their planet, um, and that that there's nothing, you know, if it's not invented here, it's not worth it, type thing. <laughs> Why don't we ask about Matts and Babu and I can see if he lies? Go for it. Ask. What of our friend Matts? We heard he he went to the serve way, the god. He did. Does he reside with you now? He does. He serves the gods by serving us. How is he? Is he is he well? Is he content <laughs> with serving the gods? He is content, and no, you may not see him. No one who serves the gods is permitted to have contact with it, with anyone but the priests. They are holy. This guy's got a freaking answer for everything. He does, doesn't he? How are new priests well, it's chosen? The same answer. It's just no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different ways of saying it. So, what was that last question? I missed. How it. are new priests chosen? By the gods. Great. Thanks. Explains it's a lot. Very specific. Well, what How did was you Max expect, chosen? Max was chosen by the gods. How do the well, gods show course. you their choices, their decisions? By the God bones. Of course. The, what are the God bones? Some kind of divination method, I guess. Yeah, that's right. How do you know what the God bones are telling you? How do you use them? We cast them and then read the results. The God's will is shown in the results. And knowing the answer before he even asks, Bim Bam says, could we watch you do that? Unfortunately, no. Only the priests may view the god bones. Is there anything in this whole goddamn society that anybody who's not a priest can can do? <laughs> I don't see are you ask Are you asking that or are you being frustrated to me? <laughs> I'm thinking it to myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you expect from a primitive... What do you expect from a primitive society, guys? Seriously. Okay, I want to ask Ed Aku, uh, have there been any other alien guests other than ourselves and Max, of course? No, no other strangers. And when was the pyramid built? It is quite an impressive structure. Ah, the pyramid was built many moons ago, many generations ago. you might wish to consider to build it out of stone rather than wood. Wood seems so temporary. 
could be a great tribute to your god. No, the god said we had to use wood. <laughs> <laughs> now I was going to say, there is no stone in the village, you know that, don't you? Yeah, that's why I mentioned it. Yeah, no stone at all. He said, everything's made, everything's made of wood. In fact, making in fact, when you say made of stone, you you, you get the, the 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 equivalent of the the puzzled expression as is as to why would you do something like that? User in your channel timed out. Who'd we lose? Thomas. He'll be back. So, what will you do if the pyramid were to User start to deteriorate? Channel. Would you build another Maybe. one? No, we, we it, with pyramids repaired. What if we could show you a way to improve the pyramid? We are from the stars, after all. And have I not already improved your pens? I can do much more. Ah, uh, yes, but the, that would be against the will of the gods. Great. <laughs> are we not Surprise. close to the gods, having come from the stars ourselves? Well, have you read your bones? How do you know it would be against the will of the gods if you haven't read your bones? Also, um, Wait, one since the gods guys, came from the stars... We're, we're ganging up on you, Matt. Right, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> that's all right. And that's not ganging up on me. It's just ganging up on him. Um, yeah. So, God, don't gang up. Please. <laughs> that's my thing. Um, uh, yeah, well, I've, I've lost track of the conversation now. Terrible. What was the last thing question asked? If you haven't read your bones, how do you know the gods? It's against their will for us to help you. Maybe some, because maybe without us even knowing, they sent us to help you. No, the gods, that that would be blasphemy. We believe you. I mean, I believe you are mistaken in this. You are not of the, you are not of the gods, and you are not of the Heliopes. He says that with a smile on his face. He's not having a galaxy, well, it's just a statement uh, of fact. If you are not if from your gods place, we are from the Explorer. If your gods came from the stars, we also came from the stars. How do you know we're not gods? How do you know our race isn't the one that brought you here? Because their look gods like look like them. Yeah. I don't know. Everyone's um, god... Looks like I mean basic anthrop basic anthropology, dude. Everybody's gods look like them. Yeah, that's not really true. The Egyptian gods didn't, and the, you know, the a lot of gods, gods didn't look like the people. Uh, they well, the Egyptian gods are all humanoids. True. With with well, um, in the sense with, that well, they're all, all humanoids. All right, how about how about Hindu faces. gods? They're like elephants and eight-armed creatures. Again, they're basically but humanoids, I see your but they've point. got human. They've got what's your heads? So yeah. Um, anyways, uh, what's this guy wearing? Is he, I mean, is he wearing, like, um, fancy ceremonial things, like a headdress or an amulet or, you know, a oh, he's got, he's got not like a headdress, that. but he's got, not, not a headdress, but he's got, he's got, um, typical, typical Helio clothing and plus a few other bits and pieces. Um, brightly coloured feathery stuff and, yeah, why, why do you ask? I got an idea. Um, I say, what do you call your gods? Yeah, that's, what, just call them that's what. That's what. That's what worries me. <laughs> when you well, clearly we need some are. kind of ideas because this guy is, is not listening to reason. Now, um, hang on, whoa, 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 He's not listening to your reason. It doesn't mean he's not being <sighs> reasonable. He's not following a logic, a course of logic. It's just not your logic. Um, uh, I don't know. Just because a people is is low tech and primitive doesn't mean they can't entertain new ideas like you know maybe the gods did send us some emissaries or envoys or something they came from the stars yeah. too that's not yeah. too far away from their thinking yeah but the, yeah, that but that, he's just like no you're not hang on woo woo like, woo, woo yes hang on woo well, hang on one Max is here at least six months ago these questions would have been raised uh, back then Obviously, the decision is obviously the decision has been made that Max and and anyone else are not the gods. All right. So this this uh, this argument of not considering it, they've had over six months to consider it. Yeah, I'd like to try perhaps a different tack here. Um, pointing to the explorer, I'll say, is it not 
great and a gift from space. No. Is it because it's not their invention? It is a vehicle, like our boats. A land boat, if you like. Then how do you think your gods brought you here? They would have used vehicles. Fine no. ones, like ours. Your vehicle does not fly. Oh, the gods Here's just the use their godly powers. Oh, they haven't seen my, they haven't seen our ship. Maybe we should take them to see our ship. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> our, our, our other vehicle does fly, however. If you say so. What can we do to prove to you that we are worthy of your gods? Nothing. Because you are not. Okay, um... You've, I'm you've to, never, I'm hang on, hang on. You guys have never had discussions with, with religious fanatics, have you? Oh, believe I me, think I have. I we are not going to get anywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. I've been an atheist my whole life. But, um, yeah. Well, this anyways, guy, this, this, uh, this guy's obviously very devout, right? And he's very, very, s not set in his ways, but then they've made up their mind. By sounds of things, the priests in general have made up their mind what is and what is and is not divine, um, in that regard, a, and they don't believe you're divine. If a miracle happened, would that convince you? Do your gods ever do miracles? No. Nope. Our gods are not here. Do you think they watch you or care about you? They do. So if they're not here, how can they watch you? They watch from afar. Well, would you at least cast the bones so we can see what the result is and what they think? No. Only the priests can see the bones. You were told this. You are a priest. I am. Uh, all right. But you're not. Okay. Very dramatically, I throw my head back, spread my arms out, and say, Oh, gods of the... What were they called? Oh, oh, he, oh gods of the Heliopes, we call upon you to demonstrate. Give this priest a sign to show that we are your emissaries and that we are worthy. And then I'm going to use telekinesis to... I don't know, do something to his clothing or, or an object in the room. Make it levitate or move, lift his hat off, uh, you know, float a holy symbol around, something like that. I don't really know exactly what's around. Mm -hmm. So give me a roll. Give me a telekinesis roll. For under, for, for a kilo or under. Well, it actually goes by grams. Um... Oh. Okay, so um, that's it. That, was, that was an illusion. It was? Oh, crap. I'm sorry. Hold on. That's okay. Well, I guess not. Man, yeah. these powers <laughs> are really super unreliable. When I, was, when I was reading the rules, I'm like, God, that sounds like you'd never be able to succeed, and I guess I was right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just you're at your relatively low level, that's all. Yes, it's something to strive for. Getting I've, better, right? Uh, I've got three mm. dots in telekinesis, and I'm still only at negative 38. <laughs> I, uh, oh. I think that I, we're not going to have any luck here. I think that option C is no good. Possibly. Um, at this okay, point, uh, we're going to have to so do the, something that pisses yeah. them off. <laughs> yeah, well, not necessarily. Um, the uh, so the priest the priest looks at you the priest looks at you with a very calm expression on on, on his face um, waiting for the sign and after about five minutes well, Cox no sign says, I guess goes, that means mm. they, that we're wrong mm. that's all right and, 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 and he comes across in what he says next comes across as as it's all right you know patronizingly it's okay you know. Oh, now I want to smack him. <laughs> <laughs> now we just all pull out our four satses. You're going to attack a priest. Okay. Well, I mean, when it comes straight down to it, there's no reason we really have to honor these people or their traditions or even not kill them. 
fucked up. Which is good, but is it's there any inter like the cops are gonna come. <laughs> what about intergalactic laws? Anything saying we can't do this or that? I think Max was very saying specific you can't not murder, to harm them, right? Well, Max doesn't want you. Max didn't want them hurt because he wants to get information out of them. Well, he's not here now. And clearly they have no information to give, or at least if they're willing to tell us. Well, but there's, there's no, like, UPF law saying it's illegal to murder these people. Uh, murder so, is well. illegal. As ah! far as I can tell, this is in the UPF world. It's nobody's world. There's, there's only yeah, law where there's... I'd be, I'd be, I would be very careful going down that moral route, gentlemen. Well, they're not leaving us a lot of options. I mean, I'm not saying slaughter them all, but maybe oh, no, no. bonk him on the head. <laughs> Just like if there's like a, a, a code for interacting with other non-spacefaring species. Yeah, or I think I'll just point out again, out of character, that uh, it's, we could take a page from the Conquistadors and just take this high priest hostage and avoid mm -hmm. having to kill anyone. Yeah, well, you, I don't I, quite think the conquistadors and the Aztecs in Spain, uh, Spanish, sorry, the uh, Mexican uh, Aztecs and Mayans worked out too well in the long run. It ended no. up with all of them dead. Eventually, after they pillaged the gold. Of course. Yeah, but they, but but they were being nice to the conquistadors. They were saying, okay, here you can you can visit us, you can do stuff, you can have yeah. some gold. You know why? Just, they yeah. just didn't you count on why? the greed. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why? Because the conquistadors, because the Aztecs thought the conquistadors, conquistadors were, were gods. Um, yeah. well, co I can't pronounce quasi quattle coming back. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yes, well, that's what I was hoping would happen here. I, okay, I know. Just pointing I'll pull, out I'll that the trick hostages the is better than murder. I think. Oh yeah, I, I'll I'll pull the trick with the eclipse and blotting out the sun. Everybody, just wait for fifteen years. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know it's frustrating now, but we're not in a rush to solve this, right? I mean, realistically. There's no pressure. There's no time pressure on you guys. Only what you put on yourselves. Well, it's, it, the only pressure is how much time we feel like sitting around here on our butts doing nothing until someday, 20 years from now, they decide they trust us. No, well, there's also the mystery. There is no stone here. That is most unusual, oh, especially to no. someone who's interested in precious metals. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there's, there's no stone. Wrong there. I think there's no large amounts of stone. He seemed to understand the word. Um, there's no, he was there's just, no building. There's, there's no, no shaping. Right, but there's not. It, there is stone. There are small stones, probably. But, uh, yeah, I think small what, rocks like Right. I think what he meant was there's no large supplies of stone. No, what I meant was of. There's no, no, what I'm saying is there's no buildings made of stone. All the buildings are made of wood. All the structures are made of wood. Okay. Right, and they, they, do believe in, they do believe in progress, right? I mean, they just recently started the rabbits, whatever yep. those things were called. So yeah, they do doobies. believe in progress. Um, yes, but typically um, their religion interferes with their progress, as per usual. What if I could show them how to mine? After all, I to did grow up in the I knowing the old ways much. of mining. But to what? To what? To what end? To what end goal? Did you say mining? My ears perk up. <laughs> yeah, the, yes. they, there's no innate value to them for rare metals at this point in their stage, and they don't see a need for stone buildings. Um, oh, I don't care about impressing them. I'm. Interested in impressing us? Yeah, it doesn't look like <laughs> bribery will work because there's nothing they want. It doesn't seem like we'll be able to convince them to let us do anything because the gods say no to every single thing. Especially not with those rules. Uh, right, and uh, you know, it doesn't. And we all agree that killing is out. Here's what I propose. I propose we just go out and walk into the temple and try and open the door and walk in. And if anybody tries to stop us, we defend ourselves. You know they're going to defend yourselves. That's a weak excuse for murder. Well, they don't have to attack us, and we don't have to kill them to keep... To okay, to, but then how do we get the out? That's the same philosophy with this missionary going to an island where he knows it's illegal to go, and he knows he's going to be attacked, 
of course this guy chose not to defend himself and died but you're saying we're going to defend ourselves with lethal lethal force you know well, the response we could use no a stun moral. grenade or something I think there is. If they make the active choice to attack people who they know will slaughter them, that's on them. But and, I don't know if, if you guys want to be all awful good about it, I guess. No, but if you walk into my house in the middle of the night when my door is locked, and then when I go to apprehend you, you shoot and kill me. Well, the smarter thing to do would be not try to apprehend you and just let you take the stuff and not put yourself in any danger. Just like when you're getting mugged. Give the guy a wallet. It's not worth dying over. <laughs> but if you know the response of the person and you do the action anyways, knowing how they are going to react, then you are murdering them. Well, I mean, I think we're starting to mix real-world moral, eth moral ethical questions here with a fantasy role-playing game. Um, yeah, well, okay. For starters, well, I would well, never well, do well, a lot well, of these well, things. Well, time out, time out, time out. It's not a fantasy role-playing game. It's a sci-fi game. Okay, sorry, okay. sorry. That's the first point. Second, th second point is yes. Look, I agree. Mixing, mixing modern day ethics with a fantasy with a fantasy setting, uh, generally doesn't work. I don't agree with that with a sci-fi setting. Right? The idea is that you guys are supposedly civilized beings, um, and you're also supposedly heroes, or at least at at, at the very worst anti-heroes. Um, so if you guys want to. Um, uh, instigate a, a massacre and that, by all means, I won't stop you. I didn't say instigate right. a massacre. Uh, hang on, I hang on, hang on. If you guys want to instigate a massacre, I won't stop you. But then again, by the same token, don't be surprised if other uh, if other forces in the universe find out about this, because don't forget the UPF does know about this planet. They haven't got here yet, but Max's captain did actually report the planet. Right, and this is why Max is on a rush. That's why Max is on a rush job to get here first. Um, so you know, um, the the point I'm making is there may be consequences to your actions, okay. positive or negative. Well, there. So, do we have any other questions? We could be out of here before anybody else finds out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do okay. we have any other questions for the priest? The answer is the gods don't allow it. Whatever so the thank are. you very much for your time, and we hope we can speak again. You have given us much to think on. My pleasure was all mine, he says, uh, and then gets up and 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 and, and leaves basically. Well, I'm fresh out of ideas. They won't listen to reason. Nobody wants to do anything unethical. Um, I I officially am out of ideas. I Whatever you guys want to do. In the midst of night, we. What should, we could probably. Well, actually, they're really heavy planes, aren't they, on the pyramid? Can you break into the pyramid? Yeah, probably. It'll take a bit of work, though. You, uh, all right. Um, if you're going to do Well, that. what kind of doors are on it? Are there yeah, big wooden doors? Or nope. Oh, there are no doors. You can just walk in. Nope. Well, the, the nope. next option I see that gets us information is one of us mm -hmm. goes. At the next at at dusk when they do their ceremony, one of us takes an item of tribute and tries to go up there and experience whatever it is, and learn what what the items the priests okay. are carrying. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that's that's certainly an option. All right, you don't know when the next ceremony is going to be, but just pointing that out. All right, um, there are other things that you guys could be doing, but you seem to be locked into this one. One thought pattern. Um, do you want me to give you some clues, or do you want me r rather I didn't? Clues, clues. We like clues. I wouldn't mind a hint. Okay. What's to stop you doing a midnight raid on the ri on the river complex? A sneak raid, nope. not a not, a, not a not a um, not a not a um, a shoot 'em up raid. Yeah, there's there's still multiple ideas that I have. But I th yeah. think we can still explore. I suggested that like an hour ago. I said, why don't we just go to sleep and get up at night and go investigate the temple and the um and the pier? But it didn't seem like anybody wanted to do that. I think we wanted to get more, you know, least resistance path with the priests out. But now that that's gone, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to step up. Yeah, so I agree. That we didn't want to step up, but now we are. 
Well, if we do that and they happen to catch us and attack us, what do we do? We know that they're going to attack us if they catch us breaking in, so doing it knowingly is the same as killing them. Then we use non lethal. Uh. Well, it's been argued that if we do something that we know is going to cause them to attack us, then it's the same as killing them. <laughs> the argument was if you. Okay, hang on. If we respond with lethal force. But as has been pointed out, we don't have to respond to, with lethal force, though, do have to have an evacuation plan, um, whether that evolves lethal or non lethal means. Um, I still think there are non-adversarial approaches we can do before we go to those that might invoke adversarial. Cool. What are they? Spill. So, tribute. Uh, we can also see about uh, if there's a way to any of the nomads. We can still approach some of the nomads. Um, we didn't have luck with the first group, but we found out that they didn't like us because they thought we were stealing their hunt so we may be able to approach them in a different manner um, that's the two that come to mind there's well, we probably could also more ask exploration Lika, around here as the village leader we could ask him if there was anything that they needed unlike the priest perhaps the lieutenant might have something on his wish list yeah absolutely yeah, possibly yeah possibly well, I, th I thought we already offered but we can offer again I mean, I don't think bribery will work to get us what we want, but, I mean, if you think it will, it's worth a shot. They seem to be, we've got paradise, we've got everything we want, we don't need anything else. Well, that's from but the priest, right? <laughs> True. Maybe others would react differently, I don't know. That's from the wealthiest guy in the village. <laughs> of course he thinks everything's perfect. But, yeah. Possibly. I, I don't. I just don't think we're out of options yet. Well, let's get to them then. I think we just got to say what we want to do first. Well, find out when the next ceremony is. They might be nightly. They might be monthly, right? <laughs> well, well, I tonight am going to just sneak into the temple and look, and see what happens. If anybody wants to come with me, you can. If not, that's fine too. Certainly and if, I get, if I'm seen, I will try as hard as I can to not hurt anybody. Well, I said it's certainly an option. That's one option. Is that, is, that what everyone, is that what you want to do? Wait till nightfall, guys? Or what's the story? Well, I want to find out when the next ceremony is. The next tribute okay. ceremony. Uh, okay, talking to Lee Carr, um, the ceremony is happening every couple of days, every three or four days. So while we're on that, we could also ask Lee Carr if there's anything that the village needs or he's interested in acquiring, or is there any service that we can do for him? Nothing that he can think of. No, nothing off the top of his head. Um, the, the, the general impression you get from Lee Carr is similar to, similar to, but not as in your face as, um, from uh, the priest in terms of um, look, you know, we've got everything we need. If, if, you know, they don't... Mm, I suppose it's more along the lines of they don't want anything because they don't know they're missing anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, right. So, some questions for him along those lines is anybody hungry? How, do you die young? Um, when your hunters go out, do they ever get injured while they're hunting? No, occasionally. Um, no one. Th there's nothing. Everyone's got pretty much. Uh, everyone's got pretty well enough to eat. Um, the um, um, there are some older um, uh, heliopes in the village. Um, so um, um, yeah, people seem to. At least some people seem to live to a in inverted commas ripe old age. Um, yeah, hunters do get injured. Uh, accidents do occur in that regard, um, but I mean, again, what's an old age? Um, you know, two thousand years ago, an old age was forty-five. In which right, case, right. I'm a buddy Methuselah. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So. Yep. No, I was uh, just looking at initial quality yeah, of yeah. life things that we could improve. Um, I've got a question for him. How does he get more ammunition for his uh, for his uh, ancestors, his family's ancestral weapon? Uh, the pretty rare is the answer. Um, occasionally, the uh, the priests will present um, some um, after a particularly heavy battle or or, or, or whatever. Um, but um, it, it's a pretty rare commodity. Um, well, uh, pistol. it seems to me that uh, we probably owe you for using some of that precious ammunition for our benefit. Jazz, would we be able to resupply him with uh, what he used on our behalf? Do we have, well, we have, do we have bullets? I got rounds. I, didn't, I didn't bring any rounds. Someone's got rounds. I could give you one of my clip. Yeah. Cat, cat brought a rather large box of ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, you use his box of ammunition first. Um, you'd have to you'd have to do some machining on the on the rounds, um, but you'd probably get them to get them to fit. Yep. Oh well, yeah. Then we'll we'll do that. All right. Well, give me a, if you're gonna do some. Okay, it'll take you a couple of hours, which will take you up to night time oh. quite conveniently. Right. Oh, I just want to interject wait. here for the moment. If we're gonna be thinking about giving them rounds. And um, we have a party member who's committed to entering the, the pyramid come hell or high Good water. Idea. We might want to hold off on giving them extra slugs until after that happens. Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to do that if we don't come up with something better. But I would be happy to come up with something better. Well, and we can, maybe, we can, we can tell... Um, why can't I not remember his name? Lee Ka. Um, Lee Ka. Lee Ka that you know hey if you could give us one or two rounds we can see if we can reproduce these for you and give you more and then in a few days when it's convenient and we're friendly we can give him more oh we'll give him a fully loaded submachine gun yeah and if we um, were gonna break in wouldn't we break in during the ceremony when the priests are all gone and everyone in the village is turned towards the temple? Well, I thought we were breaking into the temple. Wouldn't everyone in the village be watching us walk well, in? Well, no, like the river complex. Break into the river complex. Because ideally oh, we want to find Max. Uh, okay, well, you got, you got... As I see it, you've got... As I see it, you seem to be going down... You seem to be got three... Or two and a half courses of action, if you like. Someone was talking about... About about seeing what it is un that is in the, seeing what it is underneath the pyramid, and that means going in through the temple. Apparently, that's the first thing. The second thing was um, doing a raid on the river complex, looking for Max and possibly any artifacts you could pocket on the way. Um, and the third one is coming up with some ammo for Lee Carr and his and his crew, um, either as a bribe or as a helpful or as a distraction or or whatever. That's what I've heard so far. Is that, am I right in, what, in my in my assumptions? Yeah, I'd, I'd also yeah. add that perhaps yep. um, I want to ask just because I don't know. Is anyone in the uh, in the party uh, have any swimming gear or rather adept at swimming? Because perhaps that might yield some information. Yeah, don't forget <laughs> though. Someone mentioned something about not going swimming. Yeah, it might it might discover the information that the rivers full of people eating things. <laughs> well, um, you know, eating things anyway. <laughs> right. Remember there was that, remember was that, that it was the gasp juice. Did someone remember talking about gasp juice? Yeah. Um, I, I'll also point out um, that if we're going to be very strictly moral about this, um, that we are here to take their holy artifacts. And no, the 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 best thing we're going to be doing is stealing their holy artifacts from them. So, I don't know. Well, that's why I was asking earlier getting how our we're going to monopolize. Getting our pennies in a bunch beating them up a little bit is, seems kind of silly. Oh, but there's a difference between beating them up and killing them wholesale, though. And trading oh, for them. I, mean, I don't think and anyone, including me, suggested, let's go kill them all. I mean, 
above all, I would love to avoid causing any harm to anyone. Um, mm. But I don't know anyway. if we're going to be able to succeed yeah, yeah, by doing that. <laughs> anyway, so look, you've got two and a half, you've got two and a half, uh, two and a half possibly three courses of action there. Um, and at least one of those relies on night time. Probably two of them relies on night time. Um, you know, the night time raids. Um, because there's less people around at night, don't forget. Um, yeah. You've only got to worry about the patrol. And um, if you do it late enough, most people will be asleep. Most any anyone in buildings will be asleep. Pardon me, I'm very yeah, There's Sorry. also reaching out to the nomads. Um, I'm not opposed know, to yeah. the raids if we have to, but I think once we do either of the raids, we have to assume that there's a, a reasonable chance that there's no going back, right? Oh, yeah. There's so certain, there's that's certain, why there's I think we should try everything that's not irreversible. Yeah. The Nomads is probably our next bet, then. Because a raid I mean, on it's... the temple and a raid on the water complex would probably be well, the irreversible. Raid on the, only, the raid on the temple is only irreversible right, on the pyramid is if one, you, you, one get caught on the pyramid... Um, uh, or to uh, damage damage the pyramid in such a way that it, it can't be it can't be covered up, for example. Okay, the raid on the river complex probably more likely to get you busted because there's priests out there. Um, so of those two, the river complex is probably the worst of the two, in terms of cliff points, stop points, um, no going back points, whatever. Um, the nomad idea, the, the general cultural impression you got off Max and off the Heliopes in the village here so far is that nomads really aren't worth treating with. You can try, but again, my question comes to what end? Yeah, what would the nomads, the nomads aren't know. going to help you to? Yeah, w the nomads aren't going to help you find the fused metal that you're after, or the the alien artifacts, or whatever it is that you the, that you're after in that regard. And initial diplomacy did fails. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say it was diplomacy. And I, you know, in the nomads, I figure there's probably only a one percent chance of anything useful coming of that, honestly. Um, but it might be they might have stories about these river heliopes that could give us insight. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's that's certainly a possibility. I'm not. That's certainly a possibility. Um. If knowledge is what you're after in that regard, then yes, a certain, a, a second source of, of local knowledge is certainly not a bad thing to go after. So what do you? So so what's the general consensus? What's the next step? Of, what's the next plan of action, gentlemen? I vote for the nomad. Yeah, I mean, that means we have probably have to wait till the next day. We can talk to Lee Carr and get more information on the nomads and try to make peaceful contact with them. Um, I know it takes more days, but we're not in a rush, and it's, though it's not likely to, to make a difference, it really has, you know, it's not something we can't come back from. It also dovetails nicely with the two or three day delay till the next ceremony. Yeah. All right, so what I'm hearing, I think is a consensus that the next course of action is to go and talk to the nomads, is that right? Yeah, get as much info from uh, Lee Carr as we can as to how to peacefully approach them. Okay. Well, when you, when you broach the subject with Lee Carr, he basically um, he thinks you he thinks you're idiots he thinks you're fools you won't get anything with them at all out of them all but if you need to if you need to to approach them um, you're best off taking a gift um, of some sort um, he suggests one of the dopers um, slaughtered already ready to go you know like food uh, at least it'll get them to talk um, but he doesn't want to be involved, and he doesn't think anyone else from the village want, will will be involved either. And he said, and, and he says, I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take your 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 chariot either, your your vehicle either, your land boat. Sorry, my fault. 
my fault. You wouldn't take your land boat with you, your land canoe either. Hmm. Well, that all makes sense. Can we uh, somehow pay them for the loper? We don't want to the take that from them. The doper, yeah. Dopey. Um, yeah, well, yeah, if you've got something to trade. Improve fences? What's the value of one? Okay, has anyone got, a, a, anyone got a, uh, anyone got a, um, a, um, a durasteel knife on them? I have a vibro knife. <laughs> you know, um, this powered no. knife. Jazz uh, has like a survival knife, whatever. Yeah, yeah survi knife. A survival knife. A survival knife, a bladed knife would probably do it. As in its I've got ion binding tape and insulated <laughs> wire. Yeah, <laughs> can't really, again, can't really see it. Um, but I mean, you, you can see how, you can see how a, a, a good steel knife would go, would, 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 would be, would be good for the, good for the villagers. Because yeah, I mean, they I don't have any stone, they don't have any metal. Happy to trade a knife for <laughs> what a dog sized rabbit is that the trade here I have a Pretty laser much. welder yeah again powered <laughs> yeah well I mean if they want the knife uh, you know, I've got a knife too point. yeah no I didn't I'm just realize saying I that's, had that's, one that's, 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 a, that's an option if you're looking for a trade item something that the villagers would value would the villagers value that any more than the nomads the nomads want a knife? Yeah, well, possibly. Yeah, but the nomads want... thought we were after their food, so by taking them food, we're showing oh, yeah, them we're that, not coming that, after that makes their sense. food. That makes mm -hmm. sense. So, yeah, I don't know if you have a knife or you want me to take my knife off inventory, and we'll trade that for the giant. Or, or alternatively, we could just hunt for a dopey ourselves, right? Or alternatively, you're hunting for a dopey yourself, exactly. Well, but weren't the nomads upset that they thought we were going after their hunt. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Lothar, well, If we uh, go out into their territory and hunt for an animal. It'll just upset them again. Yeah. Taking them an animal certainly would, would avoid that problem, yes. Um, or is Cerise perhaps? using the knife kind of as a weapon at any point? It's Jazz no. is just, this is Jazz's backup weapon, so if... <coughs> I've got a yeah. sonic knife, so this is left over. Apparently it's Ooh, in a boot somewhere. Sonic knife, that might be useful for surgery. I suggest you hold on to that. Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> is a, just a regular bladed knife. So I'll yeah, take it. You, you might need one yeah, of those. I got a couple of frag grenades. You need something for a backup. <laughs> no, no, the oh, incendiary are my backup to the frag grenades. Oh, God, heaven help us. Um, don't forget, you've got a sonic scalpel and a laser scalpel in your uh, d in your med kit too, Doc. Yeah, well, more is always better than less. <laughs> yeah, so I'll trade a, a, a Dura steel knife for a a doper rabbit. Sure, a doper. yeah, a doper. You know, a couple couple of dopers, two or three. Yeah, no, but right, we're two. staying here in the village, right? Yeah, maybe. So that yeah, what, thing, what, you, you, what could we possibly need in a survival knife? We weren't getting stranded, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you haven't been. You're not stranded yet, are you? Yeah, I are you? Yet. Well, so is that what you want to do? Is that what you, you want to swap a knife for a dope or two? Is that what you're doing? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Sounds okay, prudent. And then, and then you're going to go hunting, hunting for, sorry, going to go looking for nomads. Is that right? Yep. All right. Indeed. In that case, exactly. In that, ca in that case, gentlemen, that's actually a good pl place to leave it for this session because we started a bit late. Okay. Yeah, my apologies about that. No, 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 no. It's cool. It happens. Don't worry about it. We we, we went through it beforehand with the, when we first started, so don't worry about it. I'll talk to you all about it later. It's all cool. Don't don't freak. Um, could you play those um, cycle uh, the titles when you're ready, please, Ryan? Yep. And let us know when we're clear. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape and Twitch. 
and of course all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz, and on behalf of the entire gaming group we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you.